Hey office mates, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well tonight. Um, as you can see, we're kind of streaming a different kind of game tonight, aren't we? Uh, I'm a little bit nervous because um, I've never actually streamed like MMO stuff. <laughs> I play I play Final Fantasy XIV a lot offline or off stream, <laughs> or rather. But um, yeah, I've never actually shown you guys what the game is like, and. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have heard, but um, Final Fantasy XIV's newest expansion, Endwalker, has finally come out. And you could see my character in the, in the background over here. You'll never guess what her name is. 100% it's... <laughs> she has the same name as me. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, this is my uh, my Viera, and I have uh, leveled her already to level 80. That's kind of why I'm a little bit behind in terms of um, actually starting on the story. Uh, I, I don't really go hardcore into the game or anything, so it took me quite a while to get her to 80, but I really live... Uh, I really live, yeah. <laughs> I really like how she looks, and um, I'm really excited to let you guys see the beginning of N Walker. So I know, uh, I don't know if a lot of you have actually played through uh, the Shadowbringers or anything like that, but N Walker is like. I think it's like the culmination of all of the Final Fantasy XIV. Like since they rebooted, it's gonna be like the end of that story arc. So um, it's gonna be quite um, quite spoilerific for people who are hopping on just now. So I really apologize if this is like your first taste. Uh, if you if you guys haven't been playing the expansions, then you probably don't really know uh, any of the characters. Uh, I'll try to explain uh, the characters that are on screen for people who are new to the series and stuff. But yeah, uh, one thing I would like to point out is I'm I'm gonna try my hardest. I don't know if it's hundred percent sure yet, but. I will be um, <clears throat> I will be creating a YouTube Let's Play series for the Endwalker expansion. So uh, even though I don't play like um, even if I don't play on st on stream all the time, I will be recording videos off st off stream if I can <laughs> if I can speak English. Yes. So um, yeah. If you guys haven't seen my YouTube channel, uh, you can type exclamation point YouTube right now. And um, yeah, you'll be able to find my channel there. So there's, uh, I haven't uploaded like the introductory video or anything yet, but I recorded it yesterday. So uh, today will officially be the first video. I'm gonna have to go and edit it and stuff like that. So I, I do wanna say yes, uh, Please do not spoil the story or or hint at things because I already know that this is probably going to be a really spectacular experience and I really want it to be like that for all of us if we can. So yeah, thanks for coming along everybody and I hope you guys enjoy the ride along with me. So yeah, let's go ahead and say hi to everyone in chat, shall we? We have Krusty. Hi, Krusty. I hope you're having a great day tonight. Great, great night tonight. <laughs> we also have Exonia and we have Mark's Power. Thank you all for coming by. Um, so these streams are probably going to be a lot more chill. Well, my streams are generally chill and comfy, I guess, but um, it'll, it'll be really laid back. I'm going to try to, um, I guess, do my best to streamline the main story, I guess. But I, I do think that maybe I might hit like a level limit or something like that for the quest line. In which case, uh, 
I could showcase like other parts of the game while we wait or even maybe play another game while we're waiting for Q too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, level 80 is not max level. No, uh, level 80 was the max level for the previous expansion, but now we're at level 90. So it'll be fun trying to level up over there. I'm, I'm already level 81 sage, actually. I've been trying to stay on top of my, uh, my roulettes and stuff. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Okay, let me go ahead and move myself to the corner so that I'm kind of prepared to block chat as well. <laughs> I think that might be the right place, I think. Maybe. Okay, here we go. Alrighty. Yeah, so here we are. I'm inside my, uh, I'm inside my personal house, actually. So let me show you guys around. How about that? We'll do it in first person, too. And like this. Okay, so I'm sitting in the basement area, actually. And over here, we have, like, the cozy fireplace where we could stay warm. And actually, uh, that's a snow cone. <laughs> right next to the fireplace so uh that's probably not the best placement for it i'm not much of an interior designer and there you go that's my favorite minion right there it's the morpho so let's go ahead and stand up and uh over here we have a bunch of furnishings i think these are from like Stormblood. we have a turtle over here and like a small kind of like bonsai tree almost uh, this is my maid, and uh, she's been standing there for quite a while now. I haven't really done much there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the posters on the wall that you see are from... I guess these are all like event, like promotional items, actually. Oh, speaking of promotional items, uh, it's funny. There's a, there's a collaboration between Final Fantasy XIV and... Um, and Grubhub so that if you order pizza through Grubhub, you'll get like a pizza eating uh, emote or something like that. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it was very strange, so I don't really know. Yeah, so I haven't really decorated the upstairs too much, but uh, that is the downstairs right there. I tried to make uh, the most use that I could with the partitions and stuff, which I really like. Um, yeah. Hi, Day. How are you? <laughs> I'm just showing people around my house right now. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of bare bones up here. I apologize. All the people trying to get houses are probably like, oh my god, please move out so that I could take your house. Uh, the interior design is... Uh, definitely not coordinated or anything. You have Christmas stuff up here and like other stuff downstairs. But yeah, it's my home and yeah. So this is my character over here. So yeah, see you can, you can go and wave. Hi, say hello. <laughs> oh, okay. So my character's name, you'll never guess. Aya Lovelace. Isn't that, isn't that unique? That's very unique, isn't it? <laughs> Are there new houses with the expansion? Um, yeah, there's gonna be, uh, I think they're gonna open up Ishgard so that you can finally go and live there too. So we're gonna have to see how that turns out. Also, hi, Pugrasnator, how are you? They made Aya Lovelace from Final Fantasy XIV into a VTuber? Yeah, they did. Okay, so, confession time. Um, way before I got into like VTubers and stuff, or when I was first thinking about it, I was, um, I was actually thinking about commissioning someone to, uh, to make my VTuber model out of my Final Fantasy 14 model. So let me, let me actually show you guys. So here, hold on. I, I gotta, I gotta go and grab, um, 
grab the image. So give me one second, okay? Uh, let me see if I can find it. So this one, um, gosh, let me see if I can find it. Um, yeah, okay. So I, I got commissioned art of my character, actually. So yeah, you can see. Isn't she pretty? I used to, um, I didn't main, um, white mage. I was more of like astrologian, but yeah, this was a commissioned piece of art and I love it so much. <laughs> Actually, uh, the artist for, uh, for this, let me see if I can find their Twitter because I really want to. Uh, show you guys who it is. Um, yeah, so this is the artist over here. So please go and uh, go and visit them if you have the chance. And so, yeah, that's my uh, <laughs> that's my character right there. So yeah, I was actually going to commission them to uh, to make a VTuber model for me, but I never got around to it, unfortunately. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys. So yeah, this is my, um, this is my Viera. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and start the story, shall we? Our story takes us all the way to Mordona over here. So Mordona uh, has been around for quite a while and there's a lot of storied history there. So we're gonna go to Revenant's Toll over here. <clears throat> now, I haven't heard of any people uh, having issues with doing the story stuff since the expansion officially released, so, uh, hopefully nothing breaks. <laughs> There's maintenance today? Wait, please don't say that. <laughs> Is there maintenance today? Is there really maintenance? Oh my god. <clears throat> okay, here you go. Oh, there is? Okay, well, I'll try to stream as much as I can then. So over here we have Alice and we have Yashola. They're both wonderful people. Whatever it is my father and the forum are hiding, I'm determined to get to the bottom of it. So Alice actually has a brother over here, which is the quest giver for the, um, for the start of Endwalker. His name is Elphinone, and he's seen a lot of, um, a lot of character growth since the beginning of the game. Like, he used to be, like, really full of himself, and, like, uh, yeah, just just that type of person where it's, like, his way, or he won't approve, really, or he just doesn't think things through. But he's grown so much now. He's such a good boy. Yeah, exactly. Two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, jeez. I better hurry, then. <laughs> Yishtola over here. She's my wife. <laughs> Yishtola is wonderful, and I love everything about her. Uh, she does have a tendency to try to sacrifice herself or try to get herself killed off. She's been planning that death flag for a while now. Um, let's hope that she doesn't gain any traction on that in Endwalker. <laughs> those, who have brought, who, those who are brought within close proximity of the towers are tempered into serving Garlemald then forced to summon lunar primals with ether drawn from the land. But even, ha even having understood this, we are yet to uncover what the Telophoroi wish to achieve by all of this. Are the towers purely for strategic advantage, or do they serve some other purpose? So the towers that she's talking about, I, I'm trying to remember what exactly was happening at the end of Shadowbringers. Um... Let's see. At the end of Shadowbringers, I believe um, <clears throat> the people from the main, like, Eorzean er area were trying to appeal to Charlian to get their help 
to investigate these towers that Yastolo was talking about. So, um, I think they started popping up near the end of the expansion. I'm trying to remember what exactly the lore was for them. It's been quite a while, so I'm sorry if I'm a little bit rusty. Brahatia. Oh, this... Okay, if there is a definition of a good boy, this is good boy right here. He was one of the main characters in Shadowbringers, and he was actually the Crystal Exarch from, from that expansion. And he's so earnest and like he's always willing to lend a hand and he's so cute and I really like him. If they hurt, if they hurt my cat boy, I'm gonna riot, okay? <laughs> Not only do the members of the forum intend to adhere to their long-standing policy of non-intervention, they made a point of sending Master Fortunal here to explicitly state that fact. Rather than simply refusing to involve themselves in our affairs, it would appear they are actively trying to prevent us from meddling in theirs. That does, of course, make Kryle's mission of securing our entry into Charlian nigh on impossible. But I'm confident that she will find a way regardless. So what he's talking about is, um, uh, let's see. It was Master Fauchenal is Alice and Alphenod's uh, father. And I think the last part of Shadowbringers he actually came here from Charlian and he he straight up told everyone, yeah, we're not helping you guys. Like, uh, we know these towers are like really dangerous and they're they're like tempering and they're tempering people, which is kind of like uh, brainwashing them, essentially. But they're tempering them, and now there's like lunar primals getting summoned and stuff. And Charlian and uh, Fortunal is like, yeah, you know about Charlian's like uh, non-intervention. That's always been a problem. Yeah, we're gonna continue being a problem. <laughs> so, uh, way to be a dick about it, basically. <laughs> your husband? Oh, Grazi is your husband, Krusty. Oh my gosh. Yeah, everyone calls Grazi my Graha. Yeah, Graha's good boy. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, other main characters. We have Tataru. Tataru's been here for a while. I have a feeling the journey to Charlene is going to be quite the test of your nerves in more ways than one. You'll miss this place while you're away. I just know it. But for now, the best thing you can do is get plenty of rest while we wait to hear from Kryle. So Tataru has been the long-standing, um, essentially super receptionist, like, she has taken care of us for such a long time. She's like MVP. She, she like, takes care of stuff that, um, are more, like, in the clerical, uh, side of things and makes sure that we have the things that we need. She really comes through and she's such a she's such a strong character and I'm really happy that she's here. Temporarying is like brainwashing to the extreme where there's no way to revert them back to normal. Mm hmm I'll uh, say found a way to undo that. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of uh Shadowbringers, Alice was actually able to undo the tempering that was done um on one of her friends. And it was actually like a game changer. And I think that they're trying to apply that to all the people that are tempered. And it's actually kind of a sad story because every time like a primal gets summoned or when a primal is summoned by people, uh, those people are, are tempered and brainwashed into just like trying to support that primal and nothing can be done or nothing could be done at the time to um to uh, what do you call it to bring them back to their senses and it was really sad because 
early on, the only thing that people would do is just kill these people. Like, they would just straight up kill them. And it was terrible. I was so sad when I, when I saw that. You can call him Raha to be more intimate. <laughs> Stola? Okay. Okay, then we have Thancred, and Thancred has gone through a lot of, uh, a lot of things, actually. He was the, um, the playboy character, initially, I think. Though, since Shadowbringers, I don't know if that's really the case anymore. So he used to be, like, this playboy character. He was, like, a rogue that would kind of, um, that would kind of just do his own thing. He would flirt with, like, a bunch of characters and just do his own thing. And actually, in the, in 2.0, he ended up being, like, uh, he got possessed by, uh, the main antagonist, La Brea, and it was, like, a big twist that he was the, uh, he was the, um, the main antagonist there, or he was, like, possessed by them so ever since uh shadow bringers um it seems like there's a been a big focus with uh with his character becoming like more of a mature type uh type of figure especially because of reen i think because oh reen is <sighs> gosh okay <laughs> Am I gonna have to unfurl this entire, uh, <laughs> the entire, like, cast of Final Fantasy XIV characters? Because it's so vast. There's so much to explain. But, um, Thancred has gone through a lot. Also, hi, AJ Fellfire. Welcome to the stream. He was the dashing rogue at the beginning. Yeah, actually, um, I think they, in they definitely introduced him during, um, in 1.0, which... Unfortunately, I never got to play, which I'm really bummed out about. Um, he became a bum in Heavensward and stopped flirting and wore an eye patch for fashion. <laughs> you could just do a cutscene night. <laughs> I, I could probably. Kind of like a recap thing where I just like react to the cutscenes. <clears throat> oh, okay. Uh, Uriyanje. Oh, jeez. He, uh, I'm going to confess to you guys. I I did not like Uriange from the beginning at first but his character I uh, he actually grew on me I think especially during the uh during Shadowbringers because I don't know I I always thought of him as like Oh, he's the character that talks in like the old fashioned type of uh, type of way of speaking. And it's like really hard to understand what the heck he's saying. But I think um, I think maybe the, the writers or the translators kind of like pulled back away from that a little bit to make him a little bit more uh, legible, <laughs> understandable for people like me. Or maybe I just got used to him. There is this one cutscene that involves him and Stola, and it was in Shadowbringers at the end of like one of the dungeons that I will forever love. Like I will love that cutscene until the end of time, especially because of the music that plays. It's um, let me see if I could uh, find the dungeon really quick. We're not gonna run it, but um, I did wanna take a look at which one it was I think it was um oh my gosh where was it it might have been like the Kitana Ravel or do you guys remember which one ended with um kind of like a jungle type area at the end um trying to remember maybe it was like one of these uh, in any case, uh, I will always remember that scene as one of my favorite ones. Uh, okay, so let's see what Thancred has to say. <clears throat> when Ehrenfall tried to free the Amaja held in the tower, it triggered some sort of alarm and the captives were killed instantly. 
As such, we have no choice but to leave them in the clutches of Tlalfari until a means of rescuing them has been found. Oh, yeah, okay, so Aaron Vald is another character that um, has, I, has the echo, and the echo is like this special ability or this link with, um, with Heidelin, I believe, and it enables us to, um, to fight against primals without being tempered by them. Plus, um, we have the ability to see into the past of certain characters that we interact with. So it, it's kind of like a, a super empathy move or something like that. <laughs> and the Talaferoi that he's talking about, um, I believe that's the name of the group that is causing like a uh, causing chaos in Garlemald right now which was kind of like the big bad of these of the entire MMO but they ended up kind of like collapsing in on themselves so it's like huh I wonder where that's gonna go <clears throat> in the meantime the summonings of lunar primals will continue just as we must rely on the Grand Company of Eorzea to put down such entities and prevent any further abductions, so too do they rely on us to come through with our investigation. Alright, Ariange. Oh, Raktika. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Much and more have we discovered of the Telophroi's machinations since Thancred and I did return from Garlemald. Verily, their troops doth appear to have been tempered in much the same manner as those engaged in the construction of the towering edifice in the capital. Okay, so he's saying that we're running into a lot of tempered people. Ah, Estinian. Okay, Estinian. So he's, uh, he's like, he's basically Emmerich's, um, boyfriend, <laughs> I think, or <laughs> I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, in the Lancer slash Dragoon uh, job quest, you actually do run into him. And I think he's like, he's like a bad guy at that point. And then you make him come to his senses. And it was actually really interesting that they involved him into the, the whole Heaven's Word uh, storyline. But he's kind of been with us ever since then. And his character... His character's always been kind of like a cold, um, cold-hearted figure, but lately, especially since the end of Shadowbringers, it seems like he's opening up, and he's actually, I'm actually surprised that he said that he was okay with joining uh, the Scions, so uh, yeah, let's see where that takes us. Not everyone with the Echo can see the past. Oh, really? There's an aura from the old Charlian that you meet through the Rabanastra raids in Bozja that has the Echo, but she can see a moment in the approaching future. Oh my gosh, it's been a while since I've uh, done those raids, and I haven't really gone through Bozja, so yeah, maybe that's something I could try in the future too. After the end of the Dragon Song War, I spent many a moon roaming, Kugane, Radzathan, even Garlemald, but never Charlian. In all honesty, a nation populated entirely by bookish types like Alphenode is not a place that appeals to me. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's understandable. Okay, so, uh, half an hour into, uh, into the stream, we are finally, uh, we are finally starting. So let me let me just check my settings really quick just to make sure. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right, guys. You guys ready to finally start? The next ship to sail. Looks like we get horse chestnut weapons. 515. Wow. I level 515. Alphanode is feeling the need to take stock. <clears throat> Aya, do you have some time to talk? I would like to gather everyone in Dawn's respite and together assess the situation in which we find ourselves. All right, here we go. First cutscene.
the whole gang's here. Let us take stock of the facts, shall we? The crisis at hand began with the sudden appearance of ominous towers in a multitude of locations throughout the world. Okay, so they're doing a recap, thank goodness, because I really need it. <laughs> we have since learned that said structures were brought into being by an organization known as the Telophoroi. The Telophoroi's stated purpose is to recreate the final days of Eon's past, an apocalyptic event that would result in the destruction of all we hold dear. Already have, already have these towers of theirs been the cause of untold suffering. Countless innocents kidnapped and imprisoned, their faith perverted for primal summonings. And unless we find a way to deal with the corruptive aura surrounding the spires, we can't even get close enough to rescue anyone. Those shielded with the blessing of light seem able to resist being tempered at least. So it's kind of like me and like Aaron Vald. And I think there was like, um, I'm trying to remember what her name was. It was, um, she was an antagonist at first, I think in Stormblood or maybe Shadowbringers too? For Dola. Yeah, exactly. So she has the echo as well, right? Or blessing of light? Is that how she was able to get through too? <clears throat> oh no, she was like augmented, right? Or something like that? I forgot. Hold on, I'm gonna drink some water. <sighs> she has the fake echo. <laughs> the budget echo. <laughs> <clears throat> still acts in place of the real echo. Mm. <clears throat> but after what happened to Ehrenwald and Fordola, we need to be very, very careful about how we proceed. Yet while these threats close to home are of paramount concern, we mustn't lose sight of the situation in Garlemald. As you know, the Telophoroi are under the leadership of Fan Daniel, and one other delightful fellow, Xenos Ye Galvis, the crown prince and our dear friend. Dear friend, all right. Yeah, he, he loves us so much that he'll destroy an entire nation just to get at us. To date, he's reclaimed his old body, murdered Emperor Varus, and plunged Garlemald into an even deeper pit of chaos. The capital has probably seen the worst of it. For a good while there, it saw the bloodiest fighting in the War of Succession. But that has since changed, and in troubling ways. Aye, during our reconnaissance, the air was not once rent by the barking of cannons, or the cries of discord. "'Twas an eerie fog of silence which did blanket that ruined city. "'The inhabitants appeared to have been tempered, "'and with nary a word spoken did they labor to transform the palace "'into a soaring edifice born of nightmares.'" Oh man, you know, Garlemald always sounded like a pretty awful place, but geez, when we finally get to see it, it's gonna be nightmarish, I bet. Oh my gosh, that place must be so horrible now. If they were indeed made thralls, it seems safe to assume that these events, too, were orchestrated by the Telophoroi. An army of primals is awful enough, but in light of recent developments, I fear it is only the prelude to an even greater catastrophe. We need to devise a means to counter this threat, and quickly, before our allies are overwhelmed. We will find a way in Charlian, I am sure of it. Master Fortunal's comments regarding the final days were curious to say the least. The Forum knows more than it is letting on. Maybe they have a way of, uh... 
kind of like disarming the spires, huh? Sorry to interrupt. Bring good news. We've just received word from Mistress Kryle. She says that arrangements for your visit have been finalized. Yo, we finally get to go to Charliana? Are you serious? Let's go. You're to head to Limsa Lomensa and board the next ship bound for Charlian. And on arrival, present yourselves as associates of the students of Baldesian. Come to assist with the Order's restoration. This music's a jam. The arrangements may be settled, but what of your thoughts? They must race at the prospect of returning home after so long. I am eager to see it, of course. Of course. <clears throat> we should set off at once. Let's go. Then I'll accompany you to the docks. You need at least one person there to wave and cry and wish you a safe journey. Aw, Tataru. Wait, Tataru's not gonna come with us? She should come with us. I want her to come with us. Quest accepted. All right, so we finally started our first quest. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's check out the journal. Um, here we go. Alpha Node calls the Scions to a meeting in Dawn's Respite that they might review what they know of the Telophoroi and their ominous towers. Events in Garlemald reinforce their suspicions that the onslaught of Lunar Primals is only a precursor to a far more deadly crisis. A crisis which must be stopped at any cost. As you ponder your options, Tataru interrupts the gathering to bring word from Kryl that you may now journey unto Charlian, as well as instructions to make haste to the docks in Limsa Lominsa. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to La, La Nosea, to Limsa. Here we go. Alright, I'm so excited! We're actually gonna get started. I wonder how many people are going to be, like, dancing around the Aetherite. <laughs> oh, it's actually not that much. Maybe everyone's over in, uh, like, the other area. Okay, so let's see. Where do we need to go? Uh, we are going to the Arcanist Guild for the shortcut. So they actually updated, like, the way that the Aether, uh, the Aethernet works. So... It looks like you could just like select a place and then it, targ it targets it for you. So that's convenient. All right, let's get started. Oh yeah, everyone's here. <clears throat> let's see what ha people have to say. Sea travel can be tedious, but I don't mind it. Tis a rare experience for most Discardians. I never thought the day would come when I would be sailing home again. It always seemed so far away. I shudder to think what manner of truth awaiteth us beyond the indigo deep. Still more do I dread the prospect of discussions long overdue. Contrary to what you might think, this is what uh, this will be like going home for me as well. I may have learned how to survive in Limsa Lominsa, but it was in Charlene where I was taught, quite relentlessly I might add, the skills to properly live. Oh yeah, I forgot that he was from he was there. I actually wait, is that new info or did we always know that? If you pay attention to the NPCs walking around, there's some familiar ones. Oh really? Like the ones over here? Or should I go and talk to everyone here? I'll talk to everyone here before I talk to Tatara. <clears throat> In cutscenes? Ah, okay. Though a part of me looks forward to returning home, I've not forgotten that my father stripped us of the privileges of our family name. 
I hope it doesn't cause trouble with the officials upon our arrival. I might have lived in Master Matoya's cave for a good part of my life, but even for me, the thought of returning to Charlene is quite exciting. I can hardly imagine how it is for the others who live most of their lives there. What a grim reason to bring you to Charlene. Not much to be done about it, I suppose, but I would have liked to give you the grand tour under happier circumstances. Um, let's see, are any of these NPCs re related to the story? The most tranquil moments of my life have all occurred when there was a ship under my feet and bait in the ocean. Nothing else comes close. Okay, so not related. Okay. <laughs> let's go ahead and talk to Tataria. Everyone's here, which is good because I've already paid for your passage and the fee is non-refundable. <laughs> See, Tatara always comes through. She's like, she she really does, uh, oh my gosh, I am like super bright. I am literally the sun right now. What's up with that? <laughs> there you go. Okay. Maybe I should turn off the, uh, the adaptive lighting. The ship for Charlene should be pulling into port soon, so please follow me and have all your luggage close at hand. I am too shiny. <laughs> I really am shiny. Okay, maybe I should turn that off. Hold on. Let me turn it off. Ah, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Here, we'll do this off. <laughs> sorry, guys. They've almost finished loading our cargo. We should be ready to depart right on shit. Or so I'm told. See, my voice acting is kind of the same, right? <laughs> Excellent. It is nice to have a smooth beginning to one's journey, at the very least. Oh my god, she is literally trying to plant those death flags already. See, now we're gonna go and get under attack because you said something like that, Stola. It's funny. Master Louis Soir came here on a ship very much like this one. And now, years later, the street urchin he befriended that day is bound for his mentor's homeland. With his mentor's grandchildren, no less. So Louis Swa was, like, this character that kind of saved Eorzea when, like, Bahamut started destroying everything. And he's kind of like this, like, um almost like legendarily renowned character through the story. Aye. It is upon reflection that every twist of time's river and fate's whims are brought into sharp relief. Thou hast matured much in the intervening years. Wert thou not caught attempting to relieve Master Louis Soir of his purse scant moments after he made landfall upon this dock? <laughs> Getting called out for your rogue activities. <laughs> oh, really? Now that's a tale I'd like to hear. Will this be your first visit to Charlie and Sir Estinian? Sir Estinian? Yeah, they are a lot more animated. They're uh, they're definitely taking advantage of all the new animation techniques that they brought in, huh? <sighs> are we strangers newly met? Why this stiff formality? I uh, merely meant it as a professional courtesy, since we are now colleagues in an official sense. Hi, Blues. Hey, how are ya? Welcome to the stream. I'm just playing through Endwalker for the first time. I'd rather you dispense with the sirs, especially in private company. No sirs. Private company. We're in public, though. 
or I'll be forced to respond in kind. Little Lord Alphano. <laughs> little, little, little son, little son. <laughs> You've made your point, Estinian. Painfully well. Uh, little son. Oh my gosh. I, I, I really want to go back to, uh, to like Sadu and, uh, gosh, her laugh was so amazing at that time. I loved it so much. <laughs> Better. Sadu's the best, yeah. No, don't be sad. You seem positively distraught. Just come with us. You don't. It doesn't have to be a goodbye. Just come with us. Distraught? Me? Don't be silly. I think it's lovely that they get to see their homeland. It's just, we're trying to thwart the schemes of an army hell's bent on destroying the world. And once again. I have to stay behind and worry that this is the last time I'll get to see my friends. Tataru, literally, just please get onto the boat with us. Get on the boat. <laughs> get in the boat, Shinji. <laughs> I'll bring them back safe and sound, I promise. Oh man, I'm playing a death flag. No sense worrying about the things we're powerless to change. Well, that's kind of mean. That's a little bit mean to say too. Oh my gosh, I'm stuck between these two. Okay, I will do my absolute best to bring them back. I promise. Can't believe I'm planting this death flag right now. I'll hold you to that. Oh, <laughs> this is going to be so sad. I bet you it's going to be a sad. Oh, good. You're still here. <gasps> Hori Bowler actually has voice acting. Hori! What brings you all this way? We're to assist the Maelstrom and the Cobbles with a Lunar Primal operation. So we thought we'd see you off before heading to the tower. Heck yeah, go kick some ass over there, Hori Boulder. And bring your brother with you. Flamine and the others wish you all a safe journey. And promise that they'll look after things here until you return. Flamine? That's how you pronounce that name. Okay, I was like... I f f flamin, <laughs> flamignon, <laughs> filet mignon. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Arctic. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. We're just playing through uh, and Walker right now, and I'm reading all the unvoiced lines. We will too, of course. Hi. We, your fellow signs of the Seventh Dawn, will do our part to ensure the end of the world won't happen on our watch. Hmm. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. I'm really excited. We set the sail. All aboard for Charlian. Yo, Strident Sailor, the most famous NPC of them all. I'm just kidding. Oh. There sure are a lot of people coming with us. This time. I didn't know that um, passage to Charlian was like just like wide open. Has it always been? Or I guess we were just never able to go. <laughs> then we must delay no longer. We will contact you the moment we learn all to value. Wish us luck. Never had a reason to go. What? What if there's really good weapons over Jerry. there? And please, please be careful. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this. No, I know this already. I know this already. You're just setting this up so that you can break my heart later. You're just going to break my heart. I'm so... Oh no. Please don't do this. I see them. They're laying the foundation. I can already... I can already tell. Ah, 
and off we go. And so you venture forth unto the unknown. A fate beyond the horizon that cannot be divined. A future undefined and in flux. In uncertain times, naught but the simplest words of wisdom will suffice. That which lives is destined to die. Love leads to loss. Every beginning has an end. Treasure every moment, every step of your descent. Who is narrating just now? Is that Van Daniel? Literally taunting us. There, in the depths where souls and stars rest, find your truth. Oh, it's Emmett. Okay. Interesting that they would still keep his narrating. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't realize old Charlie and was so close. <laughs> oh my gosh, are we here? Uh-oh. like that 1.0 cutscene. Oh my gosh, is she finally talking to us again? The day has barely dawned, my fellow early riser. We didn't even have a bed. <laughs> Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Called out to you, you say? Hmm. I've heard nothing myself. Uh-oh. In any case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. Where are the others? Oh, I sense danger. Who's that? Wait, is that my voice yet? Oh, <gasps> it's Heidelin. I am glad. Wait, no, or you're. It is. Think. And thus do we meet face to face at last. Oh my god. My warrior of light, guided by the crystal. Why now, Heidelin? I can trust your words no longer. Yeah, Shadowbringers was kind of like a big, like, reveal, right? Why now? She wants us to do something, I bet. Our 
After your sojourn in the fast, I believe you have your answer. You have gained an understanding of what I truly am. What Eidolon has always been. A primal. Ah. Oh. So... Are we tempered, really? Zodiac was created to forestall the apocalypse which threatened the ancient world. And I was brought forth to bind him. Yet seven times now. Those who would orchestrate a return to that bygone era have rejoined a shard to the god I had sundered. The greater his strength grows, the swifter does mine own diminish. The power to draw your mind into the rift betwixt is no longer mine to wield. Yet though it taxes me sorely, I dare not leave these words unsaid. Even bereft of my guidance, you and your companions have accepted the burden of this star's troubled past. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. Wheels shudder and turn. Conflict looms. Monumental. Which will decide the fate of this world and all life upon it. Oh, she has like this mask here too. When you truly understand what is at stake and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age. your peepers to the fore, folks. Charlians, just over yonder. I will not keep you further. Your traveler's heart must yearn to behold this unfamiliar land. We shall meet again, and soon. Yeah, the presentation has gotten really good over the expansions. Mm. Hey guys, I just uh, talked to Heidelin, you know. Oh, what a fine morning. I got a... Uh, I got her on speed dial. <laughs> and a good morning to you too. Taking a look at the island already? Oh, it's visible, isn't it? Then let's go. Let's go. Might still be room in the prow if we're lucky. Hey, Pam. Ah, the sleepers have arisen. Oh, there's that main theme. <sighs> there she is. <laughs> Good old Charlian. Oh, I see it. Home. Home at last. Well, maybe not in father's eyes. But we'll manage on our own, if we must. You do know you're not alone in this, don't you? You have the power of friendship. It is as Sir Estinian said. Forget not the comrades who boarded this ship at your side. I pray thee. Heck yeah, we got your backs, y'all. Thank you, my friends. We are ever grateful for your steadfast support. Upon arrival, we will be disembarking into the heart of Charlian proper.
There is there no it is. concentration of wisdom in all the world. I am confident that somewhere within that center of knowledge and learning, we will find the answers we seek. Hey, kitty. No, I'm a Miara lady. <laughs> All right, see you later. Thanks for dropping by. Here we go, new expansion. Oh my gosh, there's the moon. We're gonna head to the moon. And Walker. Oh, there's that title card. Let's go. Charlie. The solitary island nation of the Northern Seas. Where under the watchful gaze of Thaliac, patron deity of scholars, academics hoard all manner of knowledge and secrets. Once, they deigned to accept foreign students into a distant colony maintained in the Dravanian hinterlands. How swiftly they abandoned it once the first Garlean boot set hostile foot on Alamegan soil. So averse to the prosecution of war, these men of wisdom, your would-be allies. I had to take off the off the, ship. the lighting thing, sorry. Entry applications. A oh, hydrate, thank you. <clears throat> Entry applications. No cause to deny us. Glory to Astotska. <laughs> Thanks for the head pat. Hasn't Charlie and Orbit severed relations with foreign powers? Those of us without direct ties, myself included, may be refused outright. Tis true that, as a nation, Charlie only forms trade agreements with a select few neutral countries. But from a practical standpoint, an island cannot afford to be overly strict with its borders. Especially not at that island's people are wholly devoted to the accumulation of knowledge. Ah, uh, so not intervention, but um, yeah, we'll take we'll take your stuff, please. <laughs> we'll take your stuff. If we need your stuff. Proper paperwork with satisfactory evidence of identity and intent, then foreigners may be granted entry. May. Ah, uh, the introduction of the visa. <laughs> Quite. So let us be absolutely clear on these points before we proceed. The immigration officer will ask for your affiliation and your purpose of visit. Considering Charlian's views on intervention, I strongly suggest we avoid any mention of the Scions. I hope that they give me the choice to say, yeah, I'm here to kill some primals and uh, kind of just stir up trouble in the neighborhood, you know? <laughs> Kral has laid the groundwork for us to act as associates of the students of Baldessian, and our ostensible reason for being here is to aid in their order's restoration. I want to see Kral. I wonder if they gave her a new outfit. Grahatia, it might expedite our progress should an actual student be seen at the head of our little group. Would you mind leading the way? You're gonna be our tour guide. Of course. The immigration offices were this way, as I recall. Shall we? Let's go. Brand new, brand new city, brand new city. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications? Oh, I think we're going to get kicked out already. <laughs> Certainly. I see by your mark you are an Archon. 
Uh oh. I am. Grahat here of the students of Baldessian at your service. I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. We will provide additional support. That's a way dangerous weapons. <laughs> uh oh. Very good. I have paperwork detailing your group and scheduled arrival for today. She was literally about to not accept us. Did you see that? Did you see that discerning look? <laughs> And it seems some few of your companions are also Archons. If you'll step forward, we can process those applications first. Gosh, we're just like armed to the teeth. Ishtola rule. Literally immigration. Oh. Immigration simulation simulator. Globes. That list is etherically linked with the citizen registry kept in the main repository. I've confirmed your status as Archons and amended your travel records accordingly. Welcome home. That was literally like she she just said, uh, yeah, your your records are kept in a database. <laughs> so we gotta find a way to include ourselves in that database, then, huh? Now, who do we have here? Uh oh. Alphano Leveilleur. Me and Estinian do be looking at each other like, uh, we gonna be okay? <laughs> and Alizé Leveilleur. Oh no. We're gonna get split up, aren't we? Have also been approved. Ah! Having said that, the streets are abuzz with talk of how House Leveilleur's lord disowned his young progeny. Oh, gossip. Daddy issues, the expansion. And while such personal circumstances constitute no reason to deny you entry, I urge you to avoid exacerbating your present situation. Times are quite troubled enough already. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, lady. Are you like uh, the security force around here? She's lit she's literally office lady. An application was made in advance. Don't send us back, please. Hmm. Name and occupation? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Aya Lovelace, adventurer by trade. Aya Lovelace, artisan. <laughs> Aya Lovelace, champion of Eorzea. Artisan, yeah? Yeah? Yeah, we're, we're an artisan, I think. Like, w with, uh... With the things that we kill, uh, we certainly do make art with them, right? Indeed. Your profile describes you as an adventurer, but one also trained in the rather more constructive pursuits of procurement and production. You may enter. Heck yeah. Good luck, Estinian. And you, sir? Estinian Valino, formerly of the Order of the Knights Dragoon in Ishgard. Formerly, at least. And what, pray tell, is your profession now? <laughs> I kill people. <laughs> uh oh. 
Stinian. <gasps> Kryl. If you'll allow me. They still didn't give her a new outfit. What? <laughs> Ah, oh, she's so cute. My associate is a mercenary, hired for his strength at arms. Surely you are aware of the dangers we often face on our forays into the wilderness. Mistress Baldessian, if you insist on sponsoring his entry, then so be it. But while I appreciate that desperate times call for desperate measures, I find your choice of company concerning. Be advised that even a single misstep may have severe repercussions for your organization. All right, Mom. I have every confidence in my chosen company, dear and trusted comrades that they are. But I thank you for your concern. Now piss off, lady. <laughs> are you trying to be a problem, huh? Croyal, it is good to see you. Likewise, long voyage notwithstanding, you will seem none the worse for wear. There is much to discuss, but this is hardly the place. Let's be on our way, shall we? Let's go, show us around. Oh! <laughs> Welcome, friends, to Charlian. As your mercenary, I should hope my welcome includes a generous salary. <laughs> I had to say something, Sir Taciturn. Hey, don't say that too early. That lady will hear you. <clears throat> oh my gosh, we're here. We're finally here. Oh my gosh. Let's take a look. Wow. Yeah, I, I definitely get that, like, uh, that Idleshire feel. For sure. Yeah. This is so cool. <clears throat> I am unaccustomed to fabricating lies on demand. Why should it matter how I earn my living? Here we are at last, the great city of Charlian. You may have noticed some similarities with the Kerstarium, yes? In fact, I... Oh, but we really should let Kryl have her say first. We can continue this conversation at another time. We were doubtless eager to take in the sights. Not to worry, Aya. The city is not like to vanish before you finish our discussion. You promise? Promise? Allow me to extend unto thee my warmest welcome, Aya. May the wisdom of my homeland aid us in our endeavors. Even allowing that the years I spent in the first passed here in the blink of an eye, the city feels untouched by time. I'm fine, honestly. Better be to be waved through with a stern warning than be denied entry after all. That was about as awkward as expected. Still, we're here now, and that's all that matters. Hi, Kryl. I'm glad I spotted your ship coming into port. The officers are born bureaucrats and sticklers for detail. In any case, you may relax and take a moment to gather to get your land legs back. Heck yeah. Yay, we get a weapon too. Okay, let's go unpack this. 515. Oh, it's actually lower than what I have. So I think maybe I'll hold on to it for now. 515, okay. I have a 530 right now. 
old Charlian new to you. Kryle sweeps the scions with a speculative look. Ah, okay, and then there's like a chess piece for 515. Ah, so, so they were gonna go and like probably fill out my, my gear. Awesome, cool. I had thought to launch directly into an explanation of what I've learned and how we might proceed. But this is Aya and Estanian's first time in Charlian, and for the rest of you, a homecoming that was long overdue. It only fills out the left side, side quest fill out the right. Ah, I see. You must have places you wish to visit and people you're dying to see. Therefore, I propose we postpone our agenda so that you all may have sufficient time to recover from your journey and get your bearings in the city. Once you've settled in, we can reconvene at the Baldesian Annex. How does that sound? Tis a fine suggestion. We may not be welcome at the Levier Levi ah, Levi Levi estate as such, but I should like to nose around the neighborhood all the same. I am equally untethered, as it were. There is no particular place that my kin call home. Still, I would not pass up the opportunity to reacquaint myself with the city. Likewise, a quick tour of our old haunts might even yield some useful gossip. The annex was west of the Aetherite Plaza, wasn't it? I shall join you there anon. Yes, we'll see you there. Hey, everyone split up. I too have places I would be remiss in not visiting forthwith. By thy leave. What of you, Estinian? My services as a guide are yours for the asking. That won't be necessary. Until we reconvene, I prefer to wander as the wind takes me. But, but I could... Oh. Well, Raha? Would you like to join us then? You've been gone for quite a while, and this would be the perfect way to refresh those dusty old memories of yours. Oh, of course, if you'll have me. Ra, literally still with that, oh, it, if, if it's okay, if you want me, of course we want you. Come, Aya, Charlene awaits. Let's go, let's go explore. Hey, Scar Award. I'm just playing through Endwalker right now. Welcome to the stream. Oh dear, his enthusiasm is infectious, isn't it? You're dang right, Cryo. <laughs> After you, my friend. I am more than content to follow your lead. Grahatia is now accompanying you. Keep him at your side in order to proceed with quest objectives. You can leave Grahatia behind by entering a different area, using the Ethernet, or by putting too much distance between you. You can also speak with Grahatia and select the option to part ways. If you wish to have Grahatia accompany you again, Return and speak with them at the original location. While Grahatia is accompanying you, try next try speaking with Kryo. Oh my gosh, he's actually following me. Hit the hit the on the numpad to RP lock. Oh, okay. Oops. Wait. Okay, I have like a 
I have like a weird hybrid of uh, of <laughs> keyboard. What will you do? Okay, we're never parting ways anymore. Sorry, sorry, we're not parting ways. Do not forget Mr. Skryl, our worthy guide. All set? Then let us be on our way. Our first stop, amusingly enough, will be the last stand. It's a cafe on the west side of the harbor. Ooh. Kryle is also now accompanying you. Lead your two companions to the last stand and speak with Kryle at the designated location. Voice is soothing. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you can have a comfy and cozy time. While you are accompanied, you may encounter conversation points along the way, which offer additional topics of discussion. Enter the glowing area and speak with your quest companions to initiate these bonus conversations. Enjoy exploring your surroundings together. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Come on, let's head to the cafe. It may not seem so at a glance, but the last stand is actually a very important part of the city. Did he have anything else to say? I'm grateful to have Kryle's help in reacquainting myself with this place. It's almost as if I'm seeing it all with new eyes as you are. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Oh, there's so many people. So where, where do we have to go? Actually, let's take a look at the map first, shall we? Move it here. Okay, so the last stand is over here. And oh, oh, thank you so much for the follow, Neko Mako. Welcome to the stream. I hope you have a good, uh, good stay and you get to be cozy and comfy with us. I just started Endwalker and I'm finally at the new area. I'm really excited. This is so big, it's so cool. Okay, let's go to uh, the last stand, shall we? Oh, Delivery Moogle's here too. Okay. You're high, so you need a cozy stream? Okay, you came to the right place. Okay, let's go. Actually, let's go ahead and uh, maybe turn off. Uh... There you go. Oh, thank you so much for the follow too, Mr. Lechuga. Lechuga87, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, this place is so beautiful. Oh, there's the Aetherite! I do wish the weather was a little bit better. Oh, here, let's go talk. Discuss the giant statue in the harbor. Which one? Oh! Oh yeah, I remember that one. Now that is a sight which one could hardly forget. The giant statue of Thaliac. As a student of Baldesian, I was usually quartered by on the Isle of Val but I would gaze upon the scholar's wise features every time I returned by ship to the city. This path leading out towards the sea is known as the Thaliac Stoa, so named for the statue of the scholar which stands at its end. As you know, the Charlian people prize the accumulation of wisdom above all else. Thus, when Thaliac was chosen as our patron deity, it was more a matter of pragmatism than belief, an alignment of principles, as it were. We may have honored him with rather impressive sculpture, yes, but our faith is not so restrictive as that of, say, the Ishgardians. Individual Charlians can and do worship the divinities of their choosing. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So, so numerous beliefs are free in Charlian. That's cool. Alright, 
I think there's another spot here. Or actually, I should I should probably go and uh, interact with the Aether Aethernet shards when I have a chance. Ah, it feels good to tune again. Ah, Scholar's Harbor. Okay, I'll remember that as the front entrance. Ha! <laughs> My dude, I'm very sorry about your name, Dickon. <laughs> My dude. Welcome to the Last Stand. As the final and some say only bastion of fine dining in Charlian, we guarantee a quality culinary experience found nowhere else in the city. Ian, have you laughed about it too? I know, right? Oh my gosh. You, you just come to the Last Stand and then you just find a dick on. Hildois? Is this, um, is that how you pronounce? What class am I playing? Oh, I'm playing. I'm playing as the sage. So let me show you. At work, he's like dick on, but at work. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this is my character. Uh, she is a a tall bunny lady, a Viera, and she is a sage. Ooh, look at that. So it's like these four. Um, no lifts that are floating with us and we use them to deal damage and to also cure our compatriots so yeah i the animations are really cool it's like uh here's the battle uh animation That's so cool. And here's the victory pose. They bend to my will. It's so cool. I like it. The sound effects are really awesome too. Forgot to say this, but hi everyone. Hi, and welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm doing really well today. <clears throat> Miyaya. You must, you must try the Zarek. It's amazing. Best shared with a loved one if you ask me. Zarek. I wonder what that is. Is that like a, a drink? Nothing beats the fresh brew from the last stand. Oh, look. Dang, you got the coffee beans? Y'all got the coffee beans. Alright, let's go here. Oh, this is the quest the quest area. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. <clears throat> and here we are, the last stand. I may have mentioned this before, but although our research into nutrition and food preparation is quite extensive, the average Charlian tends to regard seasoning and flavor with a certain indifference. Oh, so are they saying that the food is really bland here? Oh, that's awful. As a culinarian, we're gonna change that up really quickly. How can I put this? Uh, the food is, um, it's bland. As encapsulated by our infamous Archon Loaf, the prevailing sentiment towards cuisine is dietary value first and taste a distant second. Oh my gosh, the Archon Loaf. <laughs> that was like, uh, that was like the bread that, um, I think we went and tried to make or something to cheer the Charlians up, I guess? I, I forgot what the details were exactly. There was one people at the studium, however, who could stomach the school's insipid meals no longer. So he quit his lessons and poured all his savings into building a proper eatery. Oh, is that Dickon? Damn, he wasn't dicking around anymore. <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
And so the last stand came to be. It is, as the name implies, the sole dedicated outpost of fine dining in Charlian, the one and only bastion of the culinary arts in an isle of otherwise mediocre fare. I seem to recall their burger being hailed as one of the more impressive items on the menu. Not that I ever had the pleasure of eating one myself. Because you were a typical Charlian when it comes to cheap and convenient, Raha. But surely Tataru has since taught you how to appreciate a well-prepared dish. We should all stop in when time permits and sample the cafe's delights. Shall we press on? The stairs to the side of the cafe there will take us up to the Aetherite Plaza. Oh my gosh. Smitu Tia. The oven baked lobster is one of the last stand's most famous dishes. The flavor is said to be phenomenal, but unfortunately, so is the price. Gisla. Oh my gosh. This is. Is that a bento box? Holy crap. Why, are, why do you have all the food? You're literally hogging all the food. Gisla has nothing. Like, Gisla's literally just watching you consume that entire suitcase. The Gazette featured a piece about a so-called champion of Eorzea. They say this barbaric hero has prevailed in a multitude of battles, like some avatar of perfected violence. And it's almost uncanny how closely you match the given description. What an odd coincidence. Okay, why do you call me barbaric? Excuse me? Do you see the fashion that I exude? I'm the most fashionable person here. Okay, no wonder you don't have food. No one would want to eat with you anyway. Uh, let's see. Akisa. Welcome, step right in. If you place a, your order, find yourself a seat and we'll be along shortly. Oh my gosh, this seems like a really good place for RP stuff, huh? Herman Jart. My friends and I were just discussing the monkey and the practice of black magic. Did you know that? Wait, is it morning already? How long have we been sitting here? Oh my gosh. Pirandier. Another suitcase. You have the look of an outsider, and I have little and less to discuss with foreign barbarians. Okay, alright, damn. How we go up here? Let's go ahead and do. Let's go peek around, shall we? Oh. It's such a pretty place. Wait, do these characters have like dialogue? Oh no, they don't. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is like, this is probably what, um, Idleshire looked like before it got, like, like, destroyed. Oh, that's so cool. You could definitely see the inspiration. Wow. The Aetherite is so pretty. Look how massive it is. And it's, like, such a different shape, too. It's almost like, um, it's like they... Like, they didn't just use the crystal, it's like they actually, like, put some design into it. It's, it's pretty wonderful. Let's go ahead and attune to it. Nice. An unusual shape, isn't it? I assure you, however, that it's perfectly functioning aetherite. Remember to attune yourself before we move on. 
Yeah, I did it already, Cryo. Thank you. Now, being the diligent tour guide that I am, I should make mention of the Confluence, a research facility located on this very plaza. Its much vaunted discoveries are the reason Charlene stands at the forefront of teleportation technology. In deciphering the underlying principles of elegant aetherites, it allows us to understand and reconstruct what was essentially a lost art. And off we go to our next destination, our path northeast to the Agora, Charlene's largest marketplace. Where is that? Ah, uh, just over there. Okay. Wow. Ooh, they're gonna have a lot of meetings here. This is neat. There's the market board there. Oh, we have to head over here. This is where everyone's hanging out, huh? Oh, that's so pretty. I like this book stand a lot. Look, look at the... They actually put some depth into it and everything. Wow. So cool. These little open air bookstalls are so uniquely Charlian. I'd always thought of them a common sight until I visited other nations. Do you mind if I browse the shelves for a moment? There might be some hidden gems I've yet to read. Only a moment? How optimistic! Feel free to browse all you like, but we won't wait around for you. <laughs> uh, perhaps I'll return here later then. Okay, so what what manga do you what, what manga are you looking for? Uh huh. Huh? What romance? What romance uh, manga are you looking for? Because we know uh, we know you're really into that. <laughs> Uh, the summoning bells here. What's everyone gathered around here for? Uh, there's probably an NPC later on. Tool supplier, mender. Ah, here we got materia. Yeah, it's a really good hub. It has everything we need here. Welcome to the Agora where you can find wares made in Charlian as well as a wide selection of imported goods. They also used to sell questionable prototypes from the various research institutes, but I think that practice has thankfully died out, for the most part. Otherwise, I can think of no better place to stock up for your next big adventure. Am I overselling it? <laughs> On a more serious note, the next stop on our tour is one which has particular re relevance to our ultimate purpose here. We must head back to the Aetherite Plaza, follow the path north, then climb the stairs up to that imposing building at the top. So, okay, so we keep going north. Okay. Um, I need to get the Aetherites though, but I guess we're gonna miss this one for now. We can get the Rustra. Okay. Oh, this is so neat. Oh, there's children here too. Oh my gosh. Is this the next Wondrous Tales area? Aldbert. Do you, are you related to Ardbert? <laughs> Research must needs be conducted efficiently. I surround myself with the sweet scent of flowers to calm myself down. Helps me keep an open mind, you see. The music's so nice here. Easy me. Oh there, Aya. Surprised I knew your name. 
Well, you shouldn't be. You're practically a living legend. Oh, okay. What? <laughs> Someone just broke their neck. A uh, senet. This is the Nymphaeum, a monument built in tribute to water spirits known as the Nymphae. Seems rather fitting for a city that erected a towering statue of the ruler of rivers, Thaliac, no? Wow, you can really see that statue all the way here. This is the Nymphaeum, an area dedicated to the blessings of water. Oh, Kryl, I'm way ahead of you. I already know what this is all about. <laughs> For Charlians, water represents more than a life-sustaining liquid. It is a reminder of the Great Flood, which pre precipitated the birth of our nation, as well as a symbol of the knowledge which flows from Thaliac's divine ewer. This is the reason you see an abundance of fountains throughout the city, and a propensity for utilizing water as a decorative feature in our architecture. Yeah, they do have like a lot of like waterfall type things, huh? These little decorative features are typical of Charlian architecture. Aside from the research ring, our headquarters on the Isle of Val were rather simple and rustic by comparison. Hmm. So I think we need to go up there. Yeah, it looks like there's someone up there too. Let's see, Aether, right? I think it was over here. <clears throat> I'm gonna drink some water. Gosh, why do you look like Minfilia? <laughs> <clears throat> this grand structure before you is the Rasta. Rastra. The name refers to the old original public platform erected here, upon which a forum of elected representatives would deliver orations and debate policy. Although the stage has since evolved into council chambers, the nature of the forum and the duties of its members remain largely unchanged. Am I boring you, Aha? You seem awfully distracted. My apologies. From here, one can see the entire city spread out below. The vista put me in mind of my arrival in the first. Those who had gathered at the Crystal Tower asked me how they might go about building a new home. Naturally, my answers were all inspired by my knowledge of the finest settlements I could think of, the great city of Charlian. And bit by bit, those few buildings grew into a town, a community, the Crystarium. I can almost see its echo. Oh my gosh, yeah! So, like, Raha helped influence, like, the entire Crystarium and gave it, like, the the Charlian feel. So we did have an idea of like what Charlian architecture was like. Oh, that's neat. Oh, that's the cool detail. I see. Feel free to come up when I come up here whenever you wish. I don't think the counselors would object to you enjo simply enjoying the view. Such memories should be treasured. For now, however, the tour must go on. Our spectacle of sightseeing concludes with a fitting, fittingly named Journey's End. Walk down the stairs to the east and continue straight ahead. Oh, that seems a little bit foreboding, doesn't it? Journey's End. Huh. So we go down here. Oh, this is like, oh, this place is so pretty. If I talk to Raha first, does he have something to say? 
Oh, he does. I need to talk to him before. Okay. This neighborhood is home to the highest echelons of Charlene society. I never did feel comfortable enough to wander these streets on a whim. We've arrived at Journey's End. History tells us that this was where those who put ashore with Archon Nyankrupf Nyankrupf what? <laughs> built their first homes. In the present day, it serves as the residential district for the most important officials and the oldest Charlian families. You'll see that one mansion is clearly larger than its neighbors. That estate belongs to our friends with from House Levier. All things considered, we should probably keep our distance for the time being. And with that, we bring our little Charlene tour to a close. I hope it has proven to be an entertaining and enlightening experience. Now, shall we head directly to the Baldesian Annex? You remember the way, don't you, Raha? Let me think. We head down towards the harbor, cross the bridge to our right, then follow the path below the Aetherite Plaza. Correct. After you, Aya. Well, it's such a good tour. Okay, so we go down here to the bridge, and then we... Did he say that we go underneath the plaza? Oh my gosh, that is a huge, huge mansion. Wow. I wonder if they're gonna make some housing in Charlene, too. <laughs> They're so big. Right, we cross the bridge here, as I recall. Stick to the path and be careful not to end back in the Aetherite Plaza. Charlene is full of educational and research institutions, but there are still professors who prefer to establish their own private practices. Not that I ever attended the exclusive schools they run in these residences. Perhaps the twins could tell you more about them. Oh, they just have school straight up in their houses, huh? Uh, oh, there's two aetherites here. I'll be sure to grab them later on, though. So we go here, but we make sure that we don't go over to the plaza. We just go this way. Ah, okay. Ah, there it is. <clears throat> Oh, there's an Aether Knight. Aether in that shard. Let's go tune to this one at least. This one's Baldesian Annex. This is it, the Baldesian Annex. As the joyous look on Raha's face has undoubtedly informed you, this is the Baldesian Annex. If you continue up the hill, you'll arrive at the doorstep of Phenomenon, but I think we've explored enough for one day. We can take you there another time. Inside with you, then. Ooh, that was a big tour. I'm back, and I've brought Aya and Raha with me. Ah, you were right about the ship then. Hello, hello, Graha. It's nice to see you again. And it's a pleasure to meet you, Aya. I've heard many a tale of your exploits. Ojika? Ojika Tsunjika. Ojika Tsunjika. It has been an age. Allow me to introduce Ojika Tsunjika. Administration Officer for the Students of Baldesian. He oversees the day-to-day -day business of the Annex. You may recall meeting his cousin, Ejika. Ejika? 
have I seen them? Okay, have a good jog, X. X? X? <laughs> oh, yes, Eureka. Oh, oh my gosh, the other Lala from Eureka. Wow. I've read the initial reports. Quite a shock to hear what's become of the Isle. Do take care if you have the opportunity to rejoin the expedition. This place is like a second home for the students. The Isle of Val served as our main headquarters, of course, but we often had occasion to visit Charlian. Whether do you make use of the city's research facilities, attend conferences, or procure supplies from distant shores. And the annex here was built to provide lodgings for our members while we engaged in such activities. Ever since our former headquarters, along with the Isle itself, vanished, the annex has served as our base of operations. And yet it feels so empty. With so many lost to us, our organization is a shell of its former self. Yeah, I was gonna... I, I wasn't gonna say anything, but it it do it do be looking a little bit empty in here, just a tiny bit. It kind of reminds me of uh, my apartment, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they definitely need to get some uh, get some furnishings in here. The day will come when we will see the students rise again. But first, we must ensure that the Telophoroi fall. Through that door on the left there is the main hall, where we can discuss our options moving forward. Once everyone arrives, that is. You probably have time to rest before our discussions begin in earnest. I've had private quarters prepared for you in the Andron, so please feel free to make yourself at home. Yay, we get a place. Ah, the nap room's perfect for an afternoon doze. Wait, you guys have nap rooms? What the heck? Are you all so lucky? Oh, I didn't mean to give you the wrong impression. The chambers are quite well appointed, far more so than some cheap roadside inn, you may be assured. It was simply that we were often so busy with research or exhausted from journeys abroad that we would slip into the Andron just to steal a few winks. And thus they became known as amongst the students as nap rooms, even if such naps might last well into the following morning. Say the word, and I'll be happy to show you to your chamber. Hopefully the others won't be too long in coming. I'll wait for you all in the main hall. At least, um, at least the housing area is right next to the meeting room. Oh my gosh, there's so many people here. Uh... Am I supposed to talk to you? I'm supposed to go to the main hall. Okay. Uh, let's talk to Ojika. Welcome back, Aya. Ready for a nap? Uh, retire to the room. Ask about the Andron. As Graha explained, the Andron's rooms were furnished for folks needing a break from all-night research or recently returned from expeditions. The students are used to seeing those walls plastered with articles and diagrams and personal messages. But I imagine it's quite a surprise for our newer guests. Why not take them down, you ask? Well, it's often the same people who stay in these chambers after all. And besides, when I see the old notes written by friends who've since passed, it's... Well, it's comforting in a way. As if they're still here with us. Uh, so it's kind of like a, like a graffiti type of area where they don't want to erase it. Oh, and just to be clear, these are properly appointed rooms. Any mention of naps is not meant to dissuade you from getting a full night's sleep. Okay, let's check out the room. Clean sheets and warm black blankets await. Rest as long as you like. Okay, I'm excited. What's it look like? Oh my god. 
Oh. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. That looks like Ifrit. Or... Is that like a different primal? In any case, that uh, that kind of seems a little bit foreboding. Oh my gosh, Behemoth and Ishgard. Yeah, that's got to be like a, a like an Ifrit concept art or something. Oh, we got we got them jewels. Yeah feels very lived in. Ah, oh no. Yeah, they are saying that maintenance is coming up in an hour. Oh my gosh, no. Please no. All right. Oh, there's a ladder that goes up all the way there. You missed how they introduced the person at the desk? Yeah, it's, uh, I guess they're related to the, to the, to the other person that was in Eureka. Is that right? Let's see. They're cousins. Ah, I see. Do you have papers pasted on the walls of your room? It was not unusual for occupants to pin up notes or documents and such, and then forget to take them when they went on their merry way. Sometimes it was quite deliberate, though. You might see complaints addressed to other members or a thank you card for the engrossing literature someone left behind. Beloved tra traditions that I should know better than to dwell upon. If we are to create a future for the students of Baldesian and so many others, we must look to the days ahead. All right, let's go ahead. I wasn't sure if I did Eureka to completion. Uh, I think I did. Yeah. I don't... Uh, it's awful, but I've forgotten, like, a lot of the story. Oh, oh my god, look at that. Wow. Wait, is this, um... I'm trying to remember... Garuda? Or, no, like... I don't know. Who's that supposed to be? Oh my gosh, look at these maps. Oh, this is so neat seeing all this stuff. It's kind of like they put like concept art and stuff up, huh? Look at that. There is our world map so far. The three great continents, it says. I, I love how uh, Garlemald is like uh, or the Garlean Empire is just like a swirling bunch of clouds and stuff. Is it mainly because they just don't know? Or... I don't know. Dang, it's so cool seeing how the map, the world map, like, grows with each, each expansion. Like, you have Razat Han over here now. You also have Old Charlie in here. Like this whole area was brand new from like, from like Stormblood too. Ah, that's so cool. Oh, wait, is that, that's like Azisla? Or something else? There's a crystal tower. And, um, that actually looks like it's in the crystal tower as well. Where is this? That's cool. Oh, there's uh, all that elegant technology. Oh, wait, this was before. Um, this is in, um, oh gosh, I forgot where it was exactly. <laughs> the Moogles. Okay, I gotta stop distracting myself, sorry. Feeling refreshed and alert? Our colleagues should be wandering in soon, so I suggest we stay here and wait for them to join us. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, yeah, and Jay is like, I have arrived. It's fine, Orianger. We're all here now. Let's get down to business then, shall we? Let's get down to business and defeat Fan Daniel. I bet you everyone did something like that. <laughs> Come what may, we must prevent the Telophoroi's plans from coming to fruition. At present, I see two paths for gathering the information which may aid us in achieving that goal. The first involves an investigation into the change which has come over Charlian, not to mention the recent inscrutable behavior of the Forum. As most of you know, the 99 members of the Forum are elected from the general populace. This alone guarantees a plethora of opinion with regards to foreign policy. The Bibliotheques, for example, are a group of conservatives which would have Charlian focus on recording history while remaining entirely uninvolved in the making of it. So they're like the far, um, the people that really want to live up to the non-intervention. And at the other extreme, we have advocates for proactive diplomacy and direct intervention. My grandfather, Galef, was one such member, as was Archon Luisois. Mm. Yet despite our diverse factions and philosophies, the recent vote to deny Eorzea's request for assistance was unanimous. What? How could it be unanimous? 99 people voted non-intervention? What happened? Even more concerning was the fact that many cited other more pressing duties as justification for their recalcitrance. Uh, like... What else could be more pressing? Fortuno's refusal in Gridania had those same undertones. It was as if, having stared unblinking into the face of impending doom, he had simply turned away to pursue something more important. But what could that possibly be? A mystery indeed, and one which I ask for your help to solve. Our future may depend on it. He's probably like, uh, yeah, we're trying to go to the moon, actually. <laughs> As for our second potential path, it concerns a request made directly to the students of Baldessian. Our organization was founded primarily to study strange and unexplained phenomena the world over. Mysterious relics and ruins, arcane disturbances, and so forth. Compared to our more isolationist Charlie and colleagues, we have strong connections overseas, namely with scholars and academics who share our passion for the unknown. The request in question comes from one such acquaintance, Nadana, an alchemist residing in distant Thavner. Ah, Thavnerian, uh, Thav uh... Mist, I think I've used your products before. Her missive describes the sudden appearance of a tower and the subsequent summoning of what I can only assume is a lunar primal. Oh, so they do have them there too. So it must be showing up here in Charlian too then. Or no? In response to this threat, the satrap of Rads at Han, the individual who governs the city-state, has instructed the alchemists to find a means to deal with the spire. Yeah, we need to band together. The artisans of that land are heirs to an ancient tradition, one rather unlike that of their Uldan counterparts. It is possible, nay, probable, that they have gleaned truths unattainable by Eorzea or her Far Eastern allies. They do, in fact, appear to have a strategy in mind, though it will require further research. To that end, they have requested an introduction to a capable warrior shielded by the blessing of light. Hey, we know where we're going next. Assuming we divide our forces to pursue both of Kral's lines of inquiry, then having you join the group heading to Thavner would seem the obvious choice. 
Little kitty girl. But the investigation in Charlian is of vital importance as well. Equal, I think, to the Thavnarian one. Given that the fate of the world may hinge on the results of both. Oh, do we get to choose which one we want to do? Yes, it is quite the quandary. Though it is a great imposition and an altogether too common one, our efforts would be more likely to succeed were you to lead the charge on both fronts. What? <laughs> you want me to be in like both areas? Okay, but... <laughs> Uh-oh, your cat attacked your doggo. You are indeed our champion. As to which task to tackle first, we will defer to your decision. Let us next decide how everyone else might best be assigned. <laughs> Time for cloning. Yep. <laughs> Two warriors of light. No, I'll get split into 13. There you go. And then I'll just be everywhere. <laughs> As for myself, I shall continue what I've begun in Charlian. I should also like to steal the services of an Archon or two. And thereby gain access to a greater range of reading material. I will help with that. Allow me to offer my assistance. I have some small amount of experience in the field of research. Alizé and I would also like to help, if you would have us. Anything to understand even a fraction of what our father and the Forum might be thinking. Of course, the more the merrier. The more the merrier. Right, the rest of us will make the journey to Thavna. Why couldn't we just bring Tataru with us? Thoughts? Objections? I passed through Thavna on my way to infiltrate the Empire. And though I'm not qualified to give a guided tour, I did gain a sense of where things lie. Wait, is Thavnir not part of the Razat Razat Han Island? How did how did Asinian have to pass through Thavnir to infiltrate? Or is Thavnir like part of like that cloudy area that we saw? Huh. Interesting. I'll be happy to have you along then. So for this group, it will be you, me, and Uriange. Give me a moment afterwards, and I'll supply you with all the details of Nadana's request. Consider this hall our rendezvous point once our respective tasks are complete. May our investigations prove fruitful. So, which one am I going to start on first? We're already in Charlie, and so maybe we should stay here. Oh. <clears throat> we have officially done two two quests <laughs> in this entire time. <laughs> oh, look. We actually get to choose. Well, that's neat. So, hitting the books or for Thavnarian Bound. Okay, so there are two different groups here. I still don't understand how the vote could be unanimous. What could possibly convince them all to turn their backs on Eorzea? If the Forum is intent on concealing its intentions, then a cursory investigation will avail us little, I suspect. We will need to dig deeper and with the greatest of care. The process by which forum members are elected is fair and equitable. Neither wealth nor social standing offers any advantages to a prospective candidate. But fairly elected or not, Master Matoyo still found them all to be insufferable. Our tour of this city was a pleasant distraction. I feel more than ready now to challenge the, tackle the challenges of the day. Though I have read much on the subject of Radzat Han, this visit shall be my first. It will be interesting to see how the Hanish mean to contend with the tower. 
different as their magical and technological disciplines are. So it's back to Thavnir. Had I known earlier, I would have considered more suitable attire. Hmm. So which one should we do? I... I honestly don't know. Do you guys have a preference for which one we do? See, I thought that Thavnir was like part of uh, Red's at hand, but maybe it's actually somewhere here. Probably. Yeah, no idea. Um, maybe. Kryla's intent on uncovering the reason behind the forum's inexplicable behavior. So we got foot gear here. This one we got Amaralassi, which is a drink. <laughs> Maybe we should get, uh, let's get gear first. Actually, 515, a uh, chess piece. Oh, I have a stronger chess piece already. Okay, we'll, we'll save that for now. The foot gear though, I think we could use it, yeah, okay. We'll do, we'll do the Charlian one first. An unsettling change has come over Charlian, but together we will divine the underlying cause for the forum's callousness. As I mentioned before, however, questioning the counselors directly is a fruitless endeavor. They seem to have already come to a consensus as to what and how little they are willing to divulge. Which is why I began scouring Charlene's archive of historical records for any hint of a connection to the final days. Suffice it to say that progress has been slow. There are only so many dusty pages one can skim a day. But now that I have this band of willing reinforcements, the search should proceed all the swifter. Let us reconvene outside Numenon, shall we? Exit the annex to the right, and you'll find the archives on the western edge of the woods. Oh yeah. Wait, should I... <laughs> should I just accept both of them? Or maybe I'll just... I'll, I'll just leave this for now. Dang, we really do need cloning technology. We'll be back then, Crid, don't worry. Alrighty, so where do we need to go? Uh, the hunt for specimens. What is this? Level 80 quest? Numenon. Oh, it's over here. Okay, so the studium. Let's go and grab all of the, um, all of the aetherites first. So, uh, we need Journey's End, Levier Estate. And I think we did the Rasta already. Rastra. Yeah, let's go get these two and then loop back to the studium. I wonder what this person is doing. The diminutive gleaner is on the lookout for able body adventure. Do my eyes deceive me, or are you Aya Lovelace? Well, as I live and breathe, it is you. <laughs> I knew it'd be the first to track you down. Who's the guild ship's top hunter now, eh? Wait, you have heard of guild ship hunts, yes? They are not so different from the hunts you're familiar with in Eorzea, as I understand it. I'd wager they're rather more challenging, but an adventurer of your caliber would never turn down a challenge, would you? No, no, you would not. Pray speak with Northra, Northoda at the Peristyle to register your interest at your earliest convenience. Okay, so I guess this is for like hunts, huh? Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do that, but first of all, let's go ahead and get these aetherites. There it is, right there. 
they really have like new animations. I like, I like, I'm really liking what I see. Mischievous Mikote. Hmm. Prosper Lane. Information's everything. That's why I'm chatting. I'm here chatting with anyone I can find. What? Did you think I was slacking? Uh, no, it looks like you're flirting, actually. <laughs> okay, then we head up here. So apparently up here is where the Levier estate was. They got the biggest mansion. A thrill bore. My mother told me never to talk to strangers, so I'm ignoring you. See? This is me paying you no mind at all. <laughs> Jevin. My friends and I gather here from time to time to discuss what we've been reading recently. It's truly helped us broaden our intellectual horizons. Are you gonna get to bed now? Okay, see you later, Blues. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you have a good night. Alright, so we grab this. Okay, cool. Alright, so let's teleport over to Baldesian Annex. Oh, wait. Wait, there's, um... Oh, this is where we're at already. Okay, so now we just need the studium. Okay, so we go to Baldesian Annex. Such a chill song. Giorgio. The studium is home to all manner of debate, though there are some who have taken to recording forensic victories, even betting on who will win and who will lose an argument. The scion of House Levier, who graduated quite a while ago, claimed the most wins, and has yet to be dethroned. Oh, is that Alphanode? That's Alphanode, isn't it? <laughs> Alphanode. No wonder you are so... Ah. At least he's become a good boy. Oh, this is such a chill song. I could, I could probably fall asleep to this. All right. And with this, we'll have all the Aetherites. You have attuned yourself to all the Aethernet shards in Old Charlian. Yay! Okay. So we're gonna go to the, uh, the Numenon. What is the Numenon? Numa Numenon. A Numa Numenon. My directions were easy enough to follow, I hope. In any case, you stand now before the doors of Numenon, Charlene's grandest collection of books and tomes. This building is actually only an entrance, and one of many at that, for the archives of Numenon extend deep beneath the surface like the roots of a tree. The vast halls of the great Gubal Library pale in comparison to Numenon's endless maze of subterranean chambers. Any citizen of Charlene is free to enter and peruse its shelves. Well, most of its shelves. Only Archons are afforded access to certain restricted vaults. I've dispatched Estola and Raha to investigate those. Meanwhile, Alice and Alphanode will help me continue my search through the stacks open to the general public. Your status presents more of a problem. As a non-citizen, you are only permitted to browse the first floor here at the entrance. Even so, there should be a number of books which touch upon Charlene history or foreign policy. Your task will be to find and study the relevant publications. I promise you, a working knowledge of those subjects will make it far easier to spot the sort of clues we're looking for. Let us be about it, shall we? I've told the others to meet us at the stone benches over there once they've found some promising tones. Happy reading! Oh my gosh, yeah, there do, seem, there do seem to be a lot of people there. 
Okay, so I guess we're gonna look for Laura or something. Wow, look at this place. Oh my god. There's so many books. How do you even reach that high? That's so new. Oh, hi Mari. Hi. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Konnichiwa. Oh, wait, is this a minion? Oh my gosh, it's um... Wait, um, what were these called again? Is it like an automaton or something? Oh, that's cute. Jajaba. I'm assisting my colleague in his hunt for research materials, specifically a thesis by Moonbrita. Oh my gosh, Moonbrita. Oh, I miss Moonbrita. It's difficult to find any one tome in a library of his si this size. Gosh, I wish Moonbrita was still here. It's still. It's still Swiss. <laughs> oh, were you looking for a specific volume? Only Archons may check out forbidden tomes, but if there is anything else you require, simply say the word. <clears throat> I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. I hope you're having a comfy night. The title of the spine reads The Story of Charlene. Read the book? Okay, let me go drink some water before we get started. some stretchies really quick. <clears throat> mm. Long, long ago, on an island in the northern sea, there lived a Rugad Rogadan man by the name of Inyunkrep. Inyunkrep was a student of astrology, and he divined that a flood of terrifying proportions would soon sweep over the lands of Eorzea. Yunkrep. Wait, was this guy... Was this guy part... Oh! Oh my gosh! Wait, the astrologian, um... The job quest... She was like, um... She was... Also from Charlian, right? Oh, okay. Huh, interesting. So it was that he built a gigantic ship, assembled a crew, and set sail for that imperiled realm. The flood arrived as foretold, and to their horror, the strangely churning waters drove the people towards the ocean. It was there, however, that Nuncrep's crew hauled them aboard his ark. But the danger has not passed. A towering wave approached, threatening to smash the vessel to pieces. Wait. Okay, so the flood that they're explaining, this was like, is it like the fourth or fifth umbral era, right? Or no, it's one of the umbral eras that they're, that they're talking about, I think, because uh, one of them was destroyed through like water. There's like one through lightning, it's like through a bunch of different elements that all of these umbral like eras begin. So this is the flood that they're talking about. Hmm. With only moments to spare, Nuncrep wove a mighty spell of teleportation and shifted the entire ship to safety atop Al Abalathia's spine. Abalathia! Wait, I know that place. Where is? Oh, I can't open up the map. That sounds so familiar. So it's also a, a big spell of teleportation, kind of like what Louis Swa did. Refugees from the surrounding regions huddled there alongside them, but it was not long before disputes over the dwindling supply of food led to violence and bloodshed. 
Saddened by the sight, Nimtrev gathered to him his crew and his grateful passengers and abandoned the ark to those reddened peaks. They journeyed to the coast where they built a new ship intent upon returning to the northern seas. They landed on the beach of an island and settled upon that very spot. The settlement prospered and grew, and in time it became the city of Charlene we live in to, to this day. Wait, okay, so it might have been in like Lanasea, I want to say. Alpathia. Oh gosh, where was it? No, 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 don't teleport. Oh, this is gonna drive me crazy. Hold on, I'm just gonna look it up really quick. <laughs> Um, oh, okay. I think it's like, um, yeah, it's this whole section here. Oh, it's the Sea of Clouds area and Azizla. Oh, okay. So it was like, it was like here. So they ended up in the clouds, actually. Oh, that's interesting. Is that where, like, cloud, um, kept cloud top, maybe? Yeah. Oh, this is so cool. Sorry, guys, I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of nerding out a bit. <laughs> Roads of Old, the Colony. Many years ago, on the banks of the Thaliac in the Dravanian hinterlands, a Charlian colony once thrived. Dravanian hinterlands. The settlement was originally established as a mere outpost to study the ethereal sea in the year 1311 of the Sixth Astral Era. Scholars dispatched to Eorzea found the facilities wanting and their demands encouraged a gradual expansion in structures and services. As rumors spread of growing community of academics, the area was further inundated with Eorzean students hoping to share in the renowned wisdom of the Charlians. Fifty years later, the forum passed a notion to recognize what had become a flourishing town as an official Charlene colony. Eorzean residents took to calling the colony itself Charlian, which led to no small amount of confusion when discussions turned to the subject of the motherland. <laughs> In response, some Charlian inhabitants, if pressed for a name, would simply refer it to it as the Emporium. Following the Great Exodus, however, goblins and treasure hunters claimed for themselves a corner of the abandoned colony and gave it yet another name, Idleshire. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Oh, that's so neat. The following chapter is going to introduce the most prominent features of Idleshire. This book does not appear to contain additional information on the forum or cover the history of Charlie and Motherland in greater detail. Yeah, okay, so a lot of the influences that ended up in Char in Idleshire, yeah, because it was like a a Charlian um a Charlian colony. Okay. Reference page. We apologize for the inconvenience, but the reference desk is currently experiencing an unusually high volume of requests. Please stand by until this issue is resolved. Oh, okay. Uh, Nogoloi? Nogo... How do you say name? I don't know. I'm just here looking for some tomes I need to reference for my thesis. Luckily for me, if a tome exists, it's almost certainly somewhere in Numenon. 
time-worn tome. Stewards of Wisdom. During the chaos of the sixth umbral calamity, Archon Niemkrev, founder of Charlian, bore witness to the madness and savagery of men brought to the brink of despair. So it was the sixth umbral um, calamity. Upon raising a settlement on an island in the northern empty, he instructed his people thus. Renounce the ways of war and pursue enlightenment through knowledge and reason. The Charlians took to heart the words of their savior and thenceforth served as stewards of wisdom. Upon a foundation of accumulated learning, they built a homeland unlike any other, a nation born from strengths strength of minds rather than strength of arms. With knowledge of economics came shrewd trading, with knowledge of agriculture came bountiful crops. Engineering brought wells and sewers, ending squabbles over water. Wealth of expertise could be bartered for wealth in coin, and the more their wisdom spread through the world, the more mankind as a whole would thrive. And so it was that no matter the trials and tribulations of the age, the citizens of Charlian would live by their founder's teachings. For the sake of a better tomorrow, for the sake of a brighter star, they would eschew the tools of war and with knowledge deliver the world. Hmm. Well-worn manual, blue-covered book. Hmm. <clears throat> so much lore. Oh, but we can't go down there. Forever 20 Summers. My beloved seekers of knowledge, have you ever put learning before your health and neglected to feed and rest your body as you should? I too once engaged in such foolish practices, but one night, engrossed in philosophical study, I had an epiphany. For all the world's mysteries that drive us to reckless abandon, we have so very few years of life in which to achieve our goals. Thus do I share with you this mantra, I am forever 20 years summers young. Yeah, hey, that's just like me. I am forever 20 summers young. The number itself is unimportant. You, sh you could be 19 or 23 or 40. Whatever age you are when you discover this manual, let that be the age you aspire to remain. Through mindful, healthy living, will you extend the time available to spend upon your chosen research? Another day, another moon, another summer to grasp the greater truths you pursue. In the pages that follow, we will explore the secrets of maintaining one's physical condition from a biological, etherological, and arcane viewpoint. This is, uh, this is like a health book or something. This book is on the wrong subject. Search for works which contain details on the forum and mention the history of Charlian. Okay, yeah, that, that was more of like a self-help book, actually. That's funny. Blue Covered Book An Introduction to the Heavens Have you ever gazed at the skies above and contemplated the mysteries contained therein? I speak not of shifting cloud patterns, but of the vastness beyond, of the sun and the twinkling tapestry of the night. Some think the dome above us to be a, to be a finite space, Yet amongst the leading thinkers of our age, one scholar's depiction of a boundless sea of stars has firmly taken root. Wait a minute. This really seems like, um, Uriange or something. The way that he described the, the sky in the first, it's kind of like this. Did he write this book or did he read this book and steal those words? Alas, this heavenly sea remains an unreachable, unknowable destination. There are few indeed who can explain in satisfactory detail why our own star is believed to revolve around the sun. 
It was the technologists of Alag who came closest to understanding the laws which governed the starry abyss. It was they who launched Dalamud and sought to expand beyond our earthbound existence. Ooh, the Alagans are at it again. They put the moon, or they put Dalamud there, which I guess people thought was the moon. So I guess it wouldn't be too much of a surprising thing if we found Alag stuff up on the moon. Having read of their ancient ambitions, I wonder, has your interest in this field of study waxed or waned? What if I were to tell you that the eternal constellations were arranged differently in the distant past, that their positions continue to shift almost imperceptibly but measurably as we journey into the future? Would it shock you to learn that the stars drift further and further apart and may indeed do so forever? Are you eager to learn more? <laughs> the book is on the wrong subject. Search for works. Okay. So it's basically talking about like how the universe is also expanding. So that's pretty cool. I like this place. This place is cool. I like all the lore here. Okay, this has got to be it, I think. The voice of a growing city. In the years which followed the founding of Charlian, civic policy and other matters of import were decided at the Ecclesia, a public forum at which every citizen was eligible to speak. As the city's population grew, however, this format became increasingly impractical. The larger number of participants gave rise to... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, the larger number of participants gave rise to ever longer debates, resulting in significant delays of vital resolutions. Various measures were introduced in an attempt to curtail protracted discussions, but in the year 201 of the Sixth Astral Era, it was ultimately decreed that Charlian would transition to the new form of governance. The nation would now be led by a body of 99 num members, citizens chosen um, from amongst their peers by means of a nationwide vote. This was the form as we know it today conceived and created. You have gained a fundamental understanding of Charlian history and the foundation of the forum. Head outside to the rendezvous point and await your companions. Okay. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and go back. This is so cool. How do they go downstairs though? Oh, it's probably through those doors or something. Oh yeah, it's an elevator. Ah, oh, okay. That makes sense. Let's see. Okay, we'll wait here. Sorry, were you waiting long? I wanted to make sure I'd borrowed at least a few promising volumes. Alpha Node and Kryle should be along shortly. I was delayed in similar fashion. As far as I could see, no titles in the Archon stacks mentioned the final days specifically, so we have no choice but to start with the tangentially relevant tomes, if they are even that. At present, the plan is to skim through as quickly as we dare, and share our discoveries as we make them. Would have been nice to invite everyone to the estate, plenty of comfortable places to read, and a ready supply of hot tea. Oh, I was always quite fond of reading outside. But it's not about the little pleasures, is it? You miss your home. It's been difficult. After our arrival, we managed to speak with one of the family servants and ask how things were. It seems our dear father has instructed the staff that even if Alphanode and I were returned to Charlian, we were to we are not to be allowed across the threshold. 
forever exiled Sag. A harsh measure indeed. I hope that our efforts to understand his position and that of the forum will perhaps lead to reconciliation. We'll mend this rift one day. I'm certain of it. And what of you, Graha? Have you been to visit your family? Or do they not live here in the city? Uh, well, my situation is also somewhat complicated. I was raised in Charlie, and yes, but I was born rather further away. In the southern reach reaches of Ilsabard, in fact, for generations, my people have dwelt, dwelt in Corvos, the coastal region opposite the island of Thavnir. The Alligans founded a city in that fertile land, and by ship, brought in the subjugated tribes of the Mekote to serve as laborers. Of course, the massive earthquakes of the fourth Umbral Calamity brought an end to the Empire's reign. And when the fifth calamity froze the sea solid, many of the tribes still living in Corvos braved the journey back to Eurasia. Oh my gosh, it's so cool that they're talking about all the different calamities here. So the fourth one was like earthquakes, the fifth one was like ice, the sixth one was water. Ah, oh, there's so much lore. My ancestors, however, chose to remain, that they might prevent the remnants of elegant technology from being misused. Isn't Corvos under Carlian rule? For the past 50 years, yes, some semblance of local culture remains, as is the case for most imperial provinces. But Garlemald renamed the region Locus Amoanus. Oh my gosh! Wait, that name. Wait, that was in the Sage um quest line. Sorry, I, I did it before I uh started the stream, but that's definitely a location that was mentioned by um by by like Loifa, I think, and also Lala. And maybe Faldrene, I think, or Gildavane. Sorry, nerding out. <laughs> I'm just nerding out a bit. Maybe Hacha too. I oh God. The way that they're tying things together already is amazing. When I was a boy, a nearby town came under the jurisdiction of an illustrious imperial family, the nobles of House Darnus. Wait. That sounds familiar, too. House Darnus demonstrated a singular interest in elegant civilization, and so my tribe was forced to consider a plan of action. For some time already, voices had been raised in favor of abandoning our ancient customs. After all, the elegant eye no longer passed to our eldest children, as reliably as it once had. Fear of discovery eventually tipped the scales, and the decision was made to bury our ties to the knowledge and traditions of Alag. Yeah, so the whole story with like the crystal tower and everything, and being able to control it, it's from, it's from his bloodline. So it's like what he was talking about with like the red eyes. So that's kind of like the sign that they are part of that bloodline and they have the power to, to utilize like elegant, elegant technology. So they hid it. As the last child born with the elegant eye, I was given over to the custody of friends in the students of Baldesian who had me registered as a Charlian citizen. I never even considered. Forgive me, it was an unkind question. Even Thancred was taken in by Archon Luiswa, was he not? Stories of adopted waifs and rescued orphans are more common among Charlians than you might think. 
Yet regardless of our origins, we are all provided with an equal opportunity to learn, and with sufficient perspicacity, we outsiders can even learn the vaunted title of Archon. Ten minutes? Okay, thank you. Tis exactly why I have such love for this country. Oh! Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for the raid, Em. How are you? How was your stream? How's your stream? What were you playing? You were playing Death Stranding. Awesome. Everyone, check out M, please. And welcome to the stream, everyone. Welcome, Raiders. And welcome, M, as well. I hope you guys have a comfy time while you're here. I'm I'm playing through the Endwalker uh, expansion right now. Uh, so it might be a little bit spoilery. I am also... Um, like reading all of the uh, all of the voice lines too, whenever they're not voiced. But so far, the experience has been absolutely wonderful. It's uh, it's been it's been amazing seeing all the lore. It's so much concentrated lore in just this one area. It makes me it's it makes me nerd out so badly. But yeah, welcome everybody. I hope you enjoy your stay, and thanks for coming by. is exactly why I have such love for this country. Oh my gosh, thank you for the biddies, Eve the Animator. Drink water, you dehydrated bitch! <laughs> okay, I'll drink some water. Thank you. Sharing the positivity. Aww. Yeah, I hope that I hope that M stream was awesome. And I hope that Death Stranding went great too. Mm. <coughs> thank you. <clears throat> Tis exactly why I have such love for this country, and why I wish it to remain a nation of which its citizens can be proud. Here, here, another good reason to get to the bottom of the foreign forum's stubbornness, aside from the trifling matter of our impending doom. Excuse us while we try to make some headway into these books, Aya. More company should be arriving any moment now. Uh, I'm so bummed out that maintenance is happening soon. Ah, uh, this is this this pains me so that uh that maintenance is happening. What should I do in the meantime? Should I? What do you guys think? Should I continue or uh should I should I hold off? I have no idea. Just keep going, but what if I get stuck in a cutscene and then it logs me out? I hope it doesn't skip it, but let's try it. Oh wait, they're over here too. Recap for next stream. <laughs> hmm? What else do I know of Corvos? Precious little, I'm afraid. I have not returned since Master Gallif first brought me here. I can tell you that Corvosi rebel still seeks to slip the yoke of their imperial masters, though the fighting is less is far less fierce than it once was. Oh, and they have carpets, flying carpets. The legends are quite extraordinary. Oh my gosh! Wait, so is is my flying carpet mount from Corvo? Oh my god, it is! Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh. Magic carpet. It is said an ancient king of Corvos, upon conquering a tribe of fairies, bid the fairy queen weave her magics to forge an object like the likes mankind had never seen. The queen was executed shortly after presenting the king with a flying carpet. This is not that carpet, but at least no one was slain in its creation. Oh my god, the lore does not stop. How does this keep going? There are better there are others better suited to poring over old history books, so I thought I'd try my luck for with more recent events. If you can find anything to better inform the forum's baffling behavior. Okay, sorry, I, I nerded out again, but I Oh man, we're gonna get disconnected during this cutscene. I know it. It's gonna be awful. Oh my gosh, here comes Kryle and Alphano. We've returned with our selections. 
Although I must say the pickings were quite slim indeed, Mistress Cryl has already flicked through every history book devoted to disasters, and more than a few which barely made mention of them. As such, we will be looking into research papers on the umbral calamities, as well as articles written by prominent foreign members. Perhaps their knowledge of the final days comes from an unexpected source. Speaking of which, might I ask you a few questions related to the final days? I'm the only one here who didn't witness the events of Amaro firsthand, and fear I may be overlooking critical details. Okay, yeah, sure. My thanks. Now where to begin? Okay, now we fade the black. No? Oh, wow. They're actually going to go into it. Wow. First things first, what kind of phenomena did the ancients encounter as the final days drew nigh? Oh, it was... it was like stuff coming from space, wasn't it? A complete destabilization of creation magics. Primals of unrivaled power were summoned from the ether. The worst kind of phenomena you can imagine. <laughs> Such a non-answer. Um... I think it was like, um, wasn't it destabilization of their creations or something? I think so. <clears throat> it was? Mm-hmm. Yes, the unfolding catastrophe wrought havoc on all manner of life. The chaos extended to the ancients themselves, causing the powers of creation to spiral out of control. Fear and despair manifested in terrible, tangible faction. Meteors raining from the sky, fire erupting from the ground, indescribable abominations prowling the streets. That more or less aligns with my understanding. If only the arts of creation had survived until the present day, we might have had something substantial to analyze. To the best of our knowledge, however, those techniques were not preserved or passed on. Ishtola surmises that the closest known magic is that of the summoning rituals promulgated by the Asians. Was there aught else of note which he heralded the approach of the final days? Uh, entire star was engulfed by disaster all at once. They say it began with a keening sound from the land itself. Um, actually, I forgot. Was it, it seemed like it was just like everywhere, wasn't it? Or was it just like centralized in Amaro? Uh, I don't remember exactly. I don't remember there being like a sound, but maybe I may be remembering wrong. I think you may be re <laughs> misremembering. As I recall, it was more a gradual spread. Sorry, Alpha Node. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not powerful enough. The Amarotine spoke of a keening sound. Okay, so it was the sound. It's a keening sound that rose from the land itself just before a region was visited by catastrophe. We never did hear this sound ourselves, of course, thrust as we were into the midst of the madness. Hmm. So maybe it was coming from, like, underground? So the ground was crying out, you say. To be considered the harbinger of doom, it must have been quite distinctive, and probably quite loud. I'll have to speak with one of the Numenon's mammoths. Ah, oh, they're the mammoths, yeah. And ask after any books which make mention of such sound. Last but not least, would you describe how the ancients sought to quell this unprecedented calamity? What definitive action did they take? Weren't they... <laughs> they knocked Dalamud from the sky. <laughs> oh, they summoned Hydaelyn. Not... <laughs> no, that's the complete opposite. They summoned Zodiac, I'm pretty sure. Yes, with Elidibus serving as his heart, so many gave themselves in sacrifice to bring him into being. Yeah, didn't like half the population 
basically like sacrifice themselves and then i think like something else happened and then they were gonna they were gonna do it again which is like pretty scary isn't it we do not know exactly how zodiac brought salvation to the star only that by his godlike will were the laws of nature set aright then, once the balance was redressed, the ancients offered up a further sacrifice to heal their ravages. Oh, thank you for the follow, Nova. Thank you. I hope you enjoy your stay here. Uh, sacrifice to heal the ravages of the... Oh, okay, so that's what it was. Yeah, another half of the, um, of the Moors were gonna sacrifice themselves again. Lives sprouted anew, and it was these fledgling souls they intended to render unto Zodiac, a trade that would have allowed them to resurrect the shades of lost one of loved ones absorbed by the primal. Or might have had Venet and her fellows not manifested their opposition in the form of Eidolon. Oh yeah. I think I remember something like that. But Yeah, I, I forgot the finer details. Thank you, both of you, for the renew uh, for the detailed review. I feel much more confident now in my understanding of events. With all that freshly in mind, it does make me wonder what the Telophroi truly mean when they speak of. Ah, <laughs> no. Maintenance happened. Oh no. Ah. Uh, oh no. Well, I guess, I guess that's it, isn't it? Oh jeez. Ah. <laughs> well, there it is. Gosh, it's such a foreboding, uh, such a foreboding, uh, intro screen. Okay, how about this? Why don't we, why don't we watch the Endwalker demo in the title, okay? So, oh, we're gonna see the, we're gonna see the trailer that they played. And we're gonna get hyped again, yeah? <laughs> Pretty sure you're gonna have to redo the cutscene. Okay, then I'll be able to select the right answer. So yeah, it'll be right in that case. Right? Okay, here you go. Let me go ahead and, uh, get us started here. <clears throat> Ah, oh, it's so hype. Watch all the cutscenes? You want me to? Do you want me to start from the start? Okay, from start to end? Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Uh, opening movie. Oh my gosh. Wait, what is the opening movie? Is that the Final Fantasy one? Ah, uh, hi, Dylan. A vibrant planet blessed by the light of the crystal. Amid azure seas, encompassing the westernmost of the three great continents, there lies a realm embraced by gods and forged by heroes. Her name, Kate Orzia. Oh, it was definitely 1.0. Wow, look at that. In history, chart the rise of a succession of great civilizations, each one enjoying an age of peace. The astral astral eras. That's the age of peace. All have proven ephemeral. There's Dalamud. In the year 1572 of the sixth and most recent astral era. The Northern Empire of Gollumald amassed a great army at the heart of Eorzea, seeking dominion over all. Rising in desperate resistance, the forces of the Eorzean Alliance met their would-be conquerors in the field. Yet, even as the battle raged, the lesser moon, Dalamud, was plucked from the heavens through imperial machination. From its core emerged the elder primal Bahamut, who unleashed his fury upon the realm. Oof. So 
so devastating. The devastation brought Eorzea to its knees and the era to its end. There's Louis Swa. I wonder if they have the Flames of Truth cutscene as well. Because that one was really cool too. Have come <clears throat> and gone. The light of life still shines upon Eorzea. Let's go. Labors tirelessly to raise himself from the calamity's ruin. You see a couple of familiar faces here. Oh, Papalimo. Hey, there it is. <laughs> There's Behemoth. <laughs> heedless of what lies ahead, he shall press on. Spurred by the promise of peace and prosperity. Amid this period of great change. Oh, it's so pretty. Arrives in Eorzea, one whose tale is yet unwritten. They that's cool. May he ever walk in the light of the crystal. Okay, so I actually Okay, so the, the Realm Reborn one, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Final Fantasy XIV or not, but... Oh, hey, Franks! Hey! Thanks for subscribing for seven months. Oh my gosh, another another month gone by. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your stay, too. Thanks so much for supporting me so much. Uh, we got... Uh, we got disconnected because maintenance happened for uh, for Final Fantasy, so uh, we're kind of just watching the opening movies here. So yeah, okay, so Realm Reborn, so they're gonna show like the cutscene or the animation that played at the end of 1.0. Like, how it happened was everyone so you know the battle that they were talking about like on that field that gigantic field um at the end of 1.0 it was like you were preparing for that for that battle and then at the end of it it was like this played so here let's watch it Um, I'm not sure if it'll be extra long. So that's Dalamud right there. Imagine seeing something like that happen. Oh, that is so cool. There's our warrior of light. Oh, 
I always wondered what happened to these other party members. Oof. <laughs> Get wrecked, kid. Oh my gosh. Okay, Sid with no beard is so strange. I, I just can't imagine him without a beard. Ooh. For anyone that did the coils, you know that move. <laughs> oh my god, it's incredible. Like, at the time, no one had any idea that it was Bahamut inside. Oh. It must have been so amazing to see this the first time. We are so lucky to still have any part of the world, really. And also, how's the volume? Is it really quiet? Ooh, there's Louis Soi. Oh my god, that part right there is amazing. Here they are, they're like summoning the 12 to seal Bahamut, I think. rough. Dang. He sent us away into the future. That's how he saved us. Dang, imagine how hyped you would be, like, to see that kind of animation and then like the same cutscene is telling you like um it's not over we're gonna try again and it's like oh my god like any other mmo would have been like no we're just we're just shutting down because like it, it, it's just so bad but yoshi p oh my god would ah he turned it around, and now we have Final Fantasy XIV proper, and it's just incredible. I should check out the 1.0 cutscenes? Probably. Meanwhile, WoW is inhaling that COVID. <laughs> I, won't, I won't speak to, uh, to what's going on with WoW, actually, because I honestly, I, I don't know what's going on too much about what's going on there.
There's the Crystal Tower. And there we are. I was wondering what happened to these people. Well, technically they're like the same model that were that were used for like the Warriors of Darkness, right? How can you Okay, so you've been gone for five years and then and then you just whistle and then suddenly your chocobo that's been gone for like five years is gonna suddenly come out? Excuse me. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just a little bit nitpicky, but, um, hmm. Okay. <laughs> Chocobos are immortal. Yeah, but how did they know where to go and, and all that, you know? You ever seen Chocobo's description for veterans? Uh-oh, no, I haven't. What's it say? Oh look, and then it changed the uh, changed the opening over to how it looked before. Wow, this is like really nostalgic, to be honest. This is so nostalgic. Oh, that music. Guys, if you didn't know, I actually really love this game. <laughs> I love this game a lot. There's like, uh, there's like times when I don't, um, I don't play it as much as I should, where, like, I'm not too invested in it, but this is, this is one of my games. This is like one of my favorite games. Oh, oops. Wait, <laughs> I clicked start accident. <laughs> it's going to tell me, hey, go away. Try logging in later. Oh, okay. It's gonna kill the entire game. Um, hold on. Let me let me start up the game again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, is it is it gonna let me look at the cutscenes or no? Oh my gosh! I hope they let me back in, please. Ah, okay. They're not letting me back in. Okay, um, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna bring it up on YouTube instead, okay? Here is what's gonna happen. We're gonna look it up on YouTube. <clears throat> so, FF14, um, heavens, where did it trade? <clears throat> Let's see if I can bring this up really Peggy 16. Oh, that is loud. Sorry. Um, okay, let me share this really quick. Where is my browser? Where is YouTube? YouTube, where are you? YouTube. Oh, hello. Oh, whoops. Wait, that's the wrong, that's the wrong thing. Sorry. I, I keep, I keep doing that. It needs to be window capture. Yeah. YouTube. <clears throat> okay. YouTube is here. All right. So I have to resize it. Sorry. Um, Actually, maybe I should just do that, right? <clears throat> uh, let me put myself on top. There you go. Okay. So you guys ready? <clears throat> Small hand-carved whistle that emits a unique high-pitched tone discernible only by a chocobo trained from birth to recognize used to summon your legacy. In the f five years following your sudden disappearance at Carthno Flats, your ever-faithful Chocobo spent each waking moment galloping across the realm in search of his lost master. His myriad adventures are nothing less than fantastical and heartbreaking. But that's a day, for, uh, that's a story for another, oh my gosh, so they did have an explanation for it. What the heck? 
<laughs> it's literally, it's literally a lore again. My goodness. Uh, hold on, let me pump this up. <clears throat> let me know if it's too loud. Wait, was this this trailer? Heaven's word. Okay. <clears throat> Fate has cast down these heroes, and their light now threatens to fade. Oh, it's okay, Franks. Don't worry. Thank you for letting me know. this this is when uh at, at least it wasn't actually poison it was uh it was oh jeez Raban losing his arm here oh I'm so glad that guy ate it oh no worries Franks don't worry it's fine can't believe they finally gave us his face mod <laughs> I remember I was so hyped for this because I was a dragoon. I was like, oh my god. Oh man. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Where Elite's like, whoa, that guy's cool. I want to be like him. Oh my god. So much nostalgia. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I ain't a warrior anymore. <laughs> no more warrior for me. I want to jump. I uh, remember playing with friends. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Some mana cutters. Ah, okay. So this is uh, this is the Al Albathea's vine or something. The sea of clouds. Yeah. Oh. Hype music. Ooh. Rabant angry. The bull will not be contained. Ooh. Oh, it's so cool. Ooh, I'm getting shivers. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. I was so happy. I was so happy when I watched it. I was like, oh my god. 
<sighs> God, these trailers are amazing. Okay. Um, after Heaven's Word, I, I think it was like Stormblood, right? <clears throat> Stormblood, um, hmm. It was kind of, I don't know. <clears throat> I think, I think Stormblood is better experienced not having to wait for the patch story or the for the patches for the story like if you get to experience it just going straight through it because it's all out then i think it's like really good but i think the problem is that it kind of it the the momentum it had at the end of um at the end of heaven's word it was like really pushing forward and then the start of stormblood i think it it kind of felt like they they kind of tapped the brakes and then it was like it, you, you had a lot of momentum and then it was like the first impression was kind of like oh i don't know but then like eventually it started getting like really good but i don't know that first impression was really important <clears throat> They really started putting like big statues in the, in their areas though. Oh, it's beautiful. They should have let us go up there. What the heck? <clears throat> big statues. Also, big booba. <laughs> Which got massively nerfed, by the way. Oh my gosh. Ooh, it's so fast. Ooh. I love how they're causing shockwaves. And look, the ripples in the water, too. They're, the people downstairs or below are like, ah, they're up at it again. And you could see the shockwaves coming from their impacts. That's so cool. Put Booba on the statue. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I I really like the haircut for the Warrior of the Light in this one. Ah, uh, there you go. We get to go to El Amigo. Yeah, Garlemald always in that cloud area. And then authored, which is which is essentially like China. And then uh like the Kugana area is like Japan. <clears throat> it's got some amazing animation, yeah. Oh this I like that that transition right there. Like the musical transition and everything. Yeah, how it cuts to this part seemed like really random. Almost like it's like a different character, almost. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> Teleports behind you. Nothing personnel, kid. Uh oh. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> How did you cut all the bullets? <laughs> and you cause massive damage to the area. At this point, 
so many samurais were born. <laughs> I think this might have been like one of the one of the first like big big areas that they were able to make. <clears throat> I I kind of forgot like when they dropped a uh, PS3 support. Ah, uh, Yugiri! Oh my gosh. Heck yeah. Stormblood. <coughs> Oof, that was four years ago? Crap. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Okay, so do you guys want to see my absolute favorite trailer? My favorite trailer. Here we go. This is probably the best one out of all of them. <coughs> ah, wait, hold on. This, why is, it? oh, okay. So this was when Square Enix was like, you know, we can make it really cinematic. And this is kind of like when they started learning really cool techniques to do. And it's like, yeah, you'll see. Check this out here. That boom right there, I was like, oh, wow. Wait, they learned something new. Have come and gone since that day. How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one that stood alone against the storm. <laughs> Oof, even blew all the water. So good. This song is so good. There you go. He's like reliving all of his past lives. Weary wanderer, no fight left to fight, no life left to live. God, look at that cinematography. And you're like, holy shit, that's a bad guy. Oh my god. And then this part, I totally thought it was Gridania at first. I was like, oh my god, what's happening? What sayest thou, Master Matoya? <laughs> we may accept this fate or defy it, but we cannot deny it. Deny. Lots of spoilers. Actually, it all, it all, it all happens before, uh, before the start of Shadowbringers. Oh, it's so cool how he changes jobs just trying to find a way to fight back.
Ooh, and I was like, oh, you stole a... I will hold the line. You barely finished AR. Oh my gosh, like Sonia. <laughs> And there's Thancred and Minfilia. This is this is when his character started to make a change into more of a fatherly figure, I think. This town certainly has changed, and not at all for the better. Sunblade. I promise you, Minfilia. Everyone was like, Minfilia, what? Oh, this music. Ah. Oh. oh, you know I turned into a bunny girl right after. <laughs> Gotta head to work. Okay, see you later, thanks. Thanks for passing by. Da 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 da. Greater even than the seventh umbral calamity must be undone. Oh, the music goes so well with this. It's kind of like a really hopeless feeling. Ooh. Oh, I love it. There's a part here that I absolutely love. Here. Here it is. Ooh. It, it was so strong, it split the skies. Like, oh my god. God. <laughs> I was like, hmm, sh should I should I be a tank maybe or no? Thank you, Lazy Bass. But I'm sorry. I think that'll be the end of you. <laughs> uh, let me go grab your name really quick. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and um watch the end walker trailer so oh okay youtube was like yeah you're gonna watch it anyway so <laughs> okay so after we watch this one i'm trying to think of what we might need what me what what we should probably do after but here you go <clears throat> so this one was hype too but um like, I like Shadowbringers a lot more. There's certain parts of this trailer that I really like, but overall, I think I like the Shadowbringers one more. <laughs> Those bastards, they did it again. It's so funny just thinking that underneath his shoe is a square enix text. <laughs> So cool to see Alice say have a more action uh, or like a like a be more involved with the main story instead of just like the side quests like raid stuff. Heck yeah, we're paladins now. 
There it is. Sage, my baby. So actually, this is kind of spoilery <laughs> for and Walker. So, but it's okay. As the chaos spread, the star seemed doomed to unravel, and yet. Oh. I I really love how they incorporated like the music from the previous expansions. Like this is. Heaven's word theme right here. The hour is come, free try. It's all or nothing. Stormblood. Barlamald not looking too hot. <laughs> but will I hear Dane to play their part? You took your time. That was a really clever transition. The respite afforded this land was but fleeting. Looking too hot. Hmm. Here we go, this cool transition here. We were there. We were here too. <laughs> Uh-oh. Take care, my friend. This Tola, oh my gosh, she looks she looks so beautiful. It would come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do as you must then, but we scions will fight. Until the heavens fall, until our last breath. There he is. So how do we end up on the moon? I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Green blades dark like light. God, I love that blue, purple, and white combination here. It's so good. Ah. Uh, <laughs> they got that. They got that move from Shadowbringers. They're like. Hey, I think people really like it when he does that. We got that Dorito. The Dorito ship goes to the goes to the moon. There you go, fall 2021. That's right now or winter 2021. Oh my gosh. Heck yeah. Ah, oh, Final Fantasy 14 so good. I love it. <clears throat> Alrighty, I think that's gonna, uh, that's probably gonna be it for, for stream, so let me, let me go ahead and take us over to the closing out screen, shall we? Okay, alrighty, I wanna go ahead and find someone to raid really quick, so yeah, just sit tight really quick while I go and, uh, look for someone that we can raid. 
Shadow Legends. <laughs> Glad I finally got to start. Yeah, it took me a while. I'm sorry. I really wanted to be Sage for the expansion. But thanks so much, everyone, for being here with me. I, uh, I nerded out a lot, actually. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. But I, I really love, uh, I really love this game. So, yeah. Um, let's go and find someone that we can raid. Um, do you guys have any suggestions for, for who to raid? You know how, you know how I am and it's like really difficult to, to find someone. <laughs> I'm really bad at looking for, looking for people to raid into. But suggestions are welcome. <clears throat> you really enjoyed it? Thank you. Thank you. I I'm I kinda wanna do some more 14 streams later on, actually. No, but um so this is actually gonna be a a YouTube series that I'm gonna be starting up. So um I guess stay tuned for that. So um I still haven't uploaded anything to the channel for 14 stuff, but I'm going to I'm going to start editing this stream so that it, it's kind of like concentrated uh, story stuff. But yeah, you should be able to see it there. Uh, Lady Mistral. OK, let me let me check their channel really quick. <clears throat> Just shapes and beats. Ah, this is um, this is a rhythm game, I think, right? Okay, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and read into their channel. So um, make sure uh, to read the rules before before chatting and make sure to put your best foot forward, okay? Be friendly, yeah. They're a 14 tuber and they stream 14 normally. Awesome. Okay, so what, what should the raid message be? Uh, let's do the uh, emails with... Um, What's the raid message? I don't know what the raid message should be. I am, uh, I am at a loss. <laughs> Party finder? Uh, wait, raid finder. Raid finder. <laughs> raid finder. A uh, raid roulette or right. maintenance raid. There you go. Uh, uh, maintenance raid. There you go. Okay. <laughs> That's gonna that's gonna be the uh, the raid message. Okay, so uh, I'll see you guys over there, and thank you so much for being here with me as I finally get to start um, finally get to start Final Fantasy fourteen and Walker. I'm I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, seeing me nerd out, and I hope to continue doing so in in the future. Uh, remember to go and hydrate and get something to eat. If, um, if you're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, okay, see you guys, and look for beauty in your world, okay? Bye-bye, I'll see you there.